little bit of the logo, change the name of the Crosstalk page. We're just trying to find something that works. Uh, having some legal, we're, we're not having legal issues, but the name Crosstalk's already taken by a political show, and, and Lord knows we're not political at all. So we're going to hop right in tonight. We've got a lot to get to tonight, so if you uh, want to talk to us or relate to us, shoot us a message on Facebook Live or text the line. Uh, Mike will be providing that to you a little later on. We got, a, we got a full slate. We're going to review the MSFA, the BCFL, the GDFL, P PAFL Tier 1, 2, and 3. We're going to dive into them all. What happened last week? What's happening this week? Uh, also, guys, if there's some other leagues out there that you want covered, I I'm, I'm open. But I need a league that's going to play. I need a league that's going to keep me informed, that's going to let me know, that's going to update regularly. I, I, I can't be in the dark with this. And so, let's not have any more teams fold this year. Come on, guys. I mean, the season's, well, that, season's almost just, over. Season's that's almost just over. nature of the beast. <laughs> I'm just going to be completely honest with you. Uh, so, if you were in the Kentucky semi-pro page a little earlier, pro page a little earlier, there was talks. What is – I feel like this conversation goes on five, six times a year. What separates Louisville and Kentucky semi-pro from everyone else? Let's see if we're having any problems. You, do you know if we're having any feedback? Are we looking good over there? Oh, uh, Joe Elder. Uh, I mean, he's he seems to be hearing just fine. In the chats, he says that's semi-pro. That, that is. That is okay. semi-pro. So well, it is, but... People are definitely hearing us. It, it's, it's not just semi-pro. What it is is this area is in a cycle, and, and it needs to get out of that cycle. Um, everyone owns their own fault in it, whether it be players not paying fees, not showing up to practice, whether it be coaches... Not being able, you know, in Louisville alone, I would say there's at most six, seven good coaches. You want that on one team. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Owners. You know, a lot of owners, either A, they're promising things they can't back up on, or they're, they're just frustrated. They don't want to deal with it. Leagues. Leagues getting in too deep. Leagues making promises. Or leagues getting flustered that they can't find solid teams. Uh, I remember – Last year, about this time, well, around this season, last time, last year, the MSFA was 24 team deep. They ended up with eight. You know, now the MSFA is down to eight active teams. Uh, the MSFA, in my opinion, I like what the MSFA does. I like that it gives a spot from Tennessee, from Nashville to Indianapolis. My Which only, is a open market. Right. My only problem is I don't like how they push everything. There's not a website. The PAFL, the GDFL, the BCFL, they all give me a website. They give me a place. When, when I wake up Sunday morning and I want to see the happenings, I go to those websites. The MSFA does not give me that. The MSFA has teams that are built to fold. Yes, you do have the Spartans. Yes, you do have the Canes, who are good. And the Cavs, I'll even put that in there. They have good, solid organizations. They, they lucked out with the Northern Kentucky Colts. The Northern Kentucky Colts, any other group of players would have done shut up shop. The MSFA has to do better. I would be for someone coming along and starting a new league and just say, I want teams from Indianapolis to Nashville. You could still keep the Airborne. You could still keep the Fury. You could still keep the Spartans, the Canes, maybe bring the Crusaders in. Bulldogs. I think the Bulldogs are looking for bigger fish to fry. You could get the Cutters back. And the there's, assassins in. The, the problem is just in this area, there's a rut. Guys don't show up to practice. Guys don't play to fee, pay the fees. Guys don't show up to practice. Coaches say, I'm not wasting my time. I'm not showing up to practice. Now you got an owner. I have no fees. I have no players at practice. I have no coaches at practice. I need to shut down. Now you got a league that has teams folding. It's a vicious cycle. Then at the same token, you have leagues that say, hey, we're going to do X, Y, and Z, and we never do. And then you got players say, hey, I don't want to play for this team. They've already folded. I've already heard people who say, you know, is the Piranhas going to stay because they folded once? We talked about it early on. I think they can come back. But you're going to have to br push through those naysayers. We need – there needs to be either – steps in the msfa to change that direction to bring that positivity to put all that limelight back in this area and teams can't be afraid of challenge team can't be afraid of hey yes 
the Marion County Crusaders are one of the top teams around. You can't be afraid to take that challenge. You can't say, oh, I want that easy ring. An easy ring is not, uh, not what we want. You know, I, I hear Joe Elder. Joe Elder, I, I really like him as a, as a player. He, he calls on the show. He, he's great. He said his goal was to get back to Florida. I would be curious to see, has he been back to Florida since he, or has he even had an opportunity? He's been on some great teams since he stepped out of the GDFL. The extreme were the closest in the MLFA, but in the KFL, when, you, when the teams won that, was there an opportunity to go to Florida? When the Pythons dominated, did they get a chance to go to Florida? I'm, I'm seriously asking. I don't know. But whoever wins it this year, the Comets had to jump through hoops after they won the MSFA to get, the, get to a national championship game. The Bulldogs had to play two seasons, had to play the TFA and the MSFA, and still had to play one of the top teams in the country in the Charlotte Colts. Now, I don't know if they, they may have gotten there without that, but the, the fact that you can just play for the MSFA and win that league and get a legitimate invite, I don't see it being there. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I come from an area where you want to play the best every, like, week in right. and week out. And, right. and like, I feel every, every football player has that mindset at some point in the time. I still say, but, and, and this was no fault to any of the organization, Brian or, or anybody, I still say the, the, one of the Piranha's biggest concerns was there was no get-back game. There was, after you go play the Bulldogs, you don't get to play the Colts. Yeah. After you play a team like the Chaos or the Raiders, you know, we started out with the Raiders who struggled on, on offense but had a stone-cold defense. Wolfpack came to town, stone-cold defense. Yep. Then, hey, surprise, you get the Dixon Chaos and the Middle Tennessee Bulldogs, the top, two of the top teams in the league. There was no, hey, we're, this is a game we can put up 60, everybody's going to get a touchdown, everybody's going to be all happy high-fiving each other. Lot, that leads me to, I got the national rankings out. Now, a lot of people are pushing back on national. Where's the California teams? Where's the Texas teams? Look, I'm just trying to have fun with the teams I cover. And, and yes, I do make mistakes with trying to find everything I can. But I would rather cover less teams, less leagues, but be fairly knowledgeable about them all than just say, okay, I'm including everyone in the country. Because if I go look everywhere in the country, I'll find a lot of undefeated teams. Not all undefeated teams are created equal. None. Not all. You know, there's, there might be a team out in California that's 10-0, and 0, and they're legit 10-0. and 0. There might be another team in Texas that's 10-0 and 0 and ain't played a soul. So the national rankings take in just the teams that are the leagues we cover. I try to keep – I don't take a lot of stock into games that happened before the season or games that had no league restrictions. If the league didn't make you present a, 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 or a stick to a – uh, roster, I, I don't find much benefit in that because I think it, it gives a it gives a misrepresentation of what this team is. Yeah, and I totally one hundred percent agree with you. And uh, just to jump in the comments here, people are saying let's 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 use a name besides a national ranking. Uh, some some people say let's let's use a regional rank ranking. If you guys have any ideas, just shoot the ideas out there. Uh, I mean. Like a regional ranking mean to like to me a like a regional ranking is East Coast, right? Which, which well, or like West Coast, and we kind of fall in that yeah, area well, where we cover the South, Midwest. Yeah, and it's, and it's of kind the, of East of America. Now yeah. I can go East American rankings, but even then, like I couldn't even say Indiana rankings because I don't cover the Assassins and all those teams in the I think it's the BGFL. The the the, or the, the teams closest up thing in the Chicago I could, area, right? I, the yeah. closest thing I could compare it to is the NAIA. The NAIA is specific to a majority of the country. Uh, one little part. They have na national top 25. They have national champions. But they don't include Division II teams, Division Three teams, NCAA teams. I mean, if, if we can find something that fits better, I'm all for it. But, I mean, I, I eventually want to expand to at least Texas, Florida, Georgia, Mississippi, Illinois. But uh, we Those will see. Those are where the real balls are at, right? Texas. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe. So hopping in. Uh, I was on, I started off grabbing about the MSFA, and we're going to start with the MSFA. Just a recap of last game. We had the River City Hurricanes taking on the Northern Kentucky Colts. They came away with a 39-6 a to six win. Had several TDs called back. I think it would have been much uglier if that hadn't happened. Which leads me to say, I hear that a lot. I hear that when you go play the Northern Kentucky Colts, or when you play them in general, you get a lot of touchdowns called back. 
and and I played I played the Reapers last year and we were beating them seventy three to nothing. And at one point I was like, Ref, you're not gonna call that? And his response is, Man, you're up sixty something to nothing. Do you need it? Well, yes, because that's your job. So I wonder if you get to a point where it's thirty to nothing at halftime, does the ref just start giving getting sympathetic? The ref starts saying yeah, there was probably a hold on it. If it was a close game, I wouldn't call it, but I, I got to get something going. I, that's what I start to see. Or or that, or you just have some very technique strong guys that develop a lot of uh, penalties or, or that get a lot of penalties called on the opposing team. The Colts, on the other hand, I think they're on fold watch. Call it now. A lot of teams in that area nitpicking, taking some of those players out. I think they're on fold watch. Let's 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 uh, hope by the not. way, I'm he, I'm not. hearing that the number on the screen has too many numbers. Yeah, I definitely just fixed that. Okay, uh, okay. I, I I got some fat fingers over. over okay, over I, I, I was just curious because <laughs> they they might think they're calling overseas or something. Hey, just don't dial nine nine. Hey, are you trying yeah. to buy a jersey? <laughs> we all know the guy that's out of nowhere trying to sell a jersey in a semi pro page. We know that. In that nine nine one eight seven seven. Yeah, they all look the same. Like it's, it's probably the same guy. Oh, hundred percent. It's probably the same guy. Anyway. Are the Colts on fold watch? A lot of teams in that area starting to pick. Cincinnati's booming as always. You got the the Saints. I'm a little nervous. They're they're get the teams in the FA the the MSFA the teams that are there the Spartans the Titans the Co or the um, the Canes. They're they're getting better. And if the Colts are in that division, even the Cavs. We'll touch on that later. The Cavs are surprising me. Another thing I want to talk about about the Canes. I heard they had Mike Thomas, Ooh. quarterback from the Piranhas, played for the Red Dragons a little bit. If so, that's a game changer. Now, let me preface this by saying I'm not taking anything away from Brandon Corker. I like Brandon Corker as a quarterback, and I'm not saying that Mike Thomas is going to come in and take that position. I just think the old saying, you have two quarterbacks, you have none, does not apply here. I think it push A, having Mike on that roster pushes Brandon to play better. And then Brandon Mike brings God-given quarterback skills. Six foot five, six foot six, wakes up out the bed, throws the ball eighty yards. But he also brings problems. Not not like with his personality or anything. But he's young. He can throw some interceptions. He can sure stand in that pocket and take a hit. But he he might turn the ball over a little bit. He's young. He wants to make that big play. Corker's a winner. I've seen Corker play his best when there's less seconds on the clock, when there's a minute left on the clock, and you're down six or you're tied. That's when Corker plays his best. So maybe you find a way that they both can coexist. Mike Thomas gives you a couple of big points. And Corker I, gets you started. Corker gets you home. And I believe we call that the quote X factor. Yeah. Or maybe, oh, or maybe, or if or you maybe could combine the, the two, the man will be in there, yeah. be in the CFL. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. But so I think you play both. You find a way. Corker, Thomas, you both put your pride aside because you know you both know you're bringing something to the table. You let Corker come in, get a start, develop the run game. Let Corker take some points off the top. Then put Mike Thomas in, let him chuck the ball a little bit. Hopefully he gets an easy touchdown because he's got a cannon. And then if the game's close or whatever it may be, you then can throw Corker back throughout, you know, intermittently throughout the game to get you some other points. And, and I know we do have like a lot of young, a young viewers here, but. I remember, I believe it was the Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Steelers back in the day, they had two quarterback teams. It was a Cordell Stewart and somebody else, and like they would put Cordell Stewart in like in the in, like in the backfield. I would say go more with a college style. Option. Yeah. College style, you know, you see them, you got one pocket guy who's going to sling it everywhere, and then you got Corker, uh, playmaker, scrambler, get out of the pocket, still can make some passes. Then you come to the question, though, are you taking – your quarterback out of the groove because like players like to get in the groove you know they play one two three series if and they're in the groove but that, if you switch I think, every series I think that's or whatever a, the groove in my opinion is a mentally is a, is a mental hurdle it is something you've been programmed to think it's something you've taught yourself that i need this to happen okay yeah i, I can see you that, get yeah. out of that and you say hey i got this one job to do i got this one drive and if Mike comes in, he's going to make my job easier because you know what the other team doesn't have? The other team doesn't have a backup linebacker who's just as good as our starters right. for the most part. Right, right. So you get you over that mental hurdle, and now you're twice as deadly. The same goes for receivers. I told, I said this when we was talking to the dude from the Gladiators. You get eight receivers that buy in, and all eight are saying, I'm doing for the betterment of this team. 
and you got two receivers rotating every drive, every two drive, picking on the same corner, oh. by fourth quarter, both receivers will be eaten. Oh. You just got to get over that mental hurdle. Okay, we're going to move on. The Tri-State and Titans got a forfeit win against the Tennessee Rampage. Uh, the Titans came out and watched some of the uh, Spartans game, preparing for a big game we got coming up this week. Rampage still let us all down by folded. That's, still, that's probably the shock of the MSFA season for me. And do you I mean, Matt, Matthew, you being the insider that you are, have you heard why they folded? Was players just not coming to practice? I, they I really haven't. The, um, the, t the Rampage were one of those teams. I don't even think they had a, a public page. I did. I never saw pictures. I never saw yeah. video. I don't I don't know if their uniforms look like this year. I don't even know if they got uniforms this year. They were pretty low profile from the start. They've kind of been that way in the okay. past. Really, Kelsey Dixon was about the only promotion that he gave them. And I don't know. I don't know where he went. And I didn't see it. I didn't and see was, it. And was he the owner or just the player? Yeah, he was just a, a kind of a face of it for just years. A, okay. I think Christopher Richards or something was the owner, okay. and I haven't heard anything from him either. Uh, Kentucky Spartans took on the Kentucky Anna Calvary. It was an 18-14 game. Shocked me. I actually Great went game. to that game. I actually went. I was like, hey, hey I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to soak this up. The Sp First thing I noticed, Spartans struggle as an organization without Evan Harvey. Now look, I'm not over Evan. I'm not over hyping Evan Harvey. He's got some struggles, but he also brings a lot to the table. And one of the Spartans players even came to me and said, "How can one man make this much of a difference?" And I told him it's simple. When Evan's in there, everybody is hyped. The line's hyped. The receivers are hyped because they know that their routes are open. They know that they have a possibility and a potential to get that ball. The defense, on the other hand, they can't blitz Evan because Evan will chew that up. He he sees that. His arm is so-so, but his vision and his brain for the game is, is a, uh, one of the best. That's where your football IQ right. comes, your comes football into play. Right, football IQ. You blitz Evan, he's going to make you pay. So now you have to sit back and prepare for him to pass. Opens up the run game. They got little shifty running backs. That opens up the run game. Now, now the Spartans are able to put up points. Spartans are able to put up points. They have that kicker. He can add on to it. Now you put up points. You put the other team in a position where, hey, I have to throw the ball too. Nine times out of ten, you're not as good as they are at throwing the ball. Takes you out of your game. You make mistakes. You've lost. I go out to the game the other day. There's no Evan. The Cavs said, we'll just blitz. The passes really weren't on point. There was a couple passes that got made here and there. The, the Cavs said, we'll blitz. Made the quarterback, I think his name's Kane, made him un, un, uneasy. Took away the run game. There was no really big run by the by the Spartans. And then the defense was exhausted because the defense was out there more than they're used to. The, Spart the Spartans' defense is made up by a bunch of role players and pieces. They got Michael Rose, and they do have Austin Green, who comes in and makes a difference. But for the most part, their defense is meant for their offense. Yeah. Smaller, athletic, we're hoping you're slinging the ball around. They still struggled with it. We are a bend, don't break d d d d d defense. But the good thing about it is the Spartans can learn from this. They're finding ways to win. Yeah. They're finding ways to hold on to victories. And that's what, what that's the only thing, that's the only reason the Cavs lost. Because the Cavs, as a unit, does not have that way to win. Or the or the mental strength to know how to win because I, they had I the believe ball. you they, guys posted they had three personal fouls back to back to back. Is, is that, that, correct? I, I, that That's a point I want to get to next. But they had the ball. They had an interception that took them down to the red zone very late into the game. They had the ball within their 10 yard line. It was over. We okay over there? Yeah. Okay. We it, it was over. If they could have just found a way to punch that in, they turn it over, leads to great field position by the Spartans. Spartans able to say, hey, we're in it now. We got life. We're going to win. Leads me to the Cavs. First off, I want to start with, I want, I want to kind of bounce back between the good news and the bad news of it. The good news is the Cavs have a good core, and they surprise the heck out of me. They, are, they are starting to grow. They are. A team that I had listed much further down, they were able to jump some people from what I saw. If, if the Cavs were in the South, they might be the favorite to win the South. They might be. But, well, I think, I, I'll touch on this later. I think the Airborne's a, a, a better version of the Cavs. I saw something Saturday that was very concerning. The Cavs had a, had a lot of depth, and it turned on them. There was a point where they had a touchdown, and they got a flag. And it brought the touchdown back. Then they had a, another play on fourth down where no one knew what they were doing. It looked like 
Canadian football. Everybody was just running around. All the receivers were trying to get set. They got another penalty. It was a, it was a turnover. <clears throat> Going into the half, the Spartans were on a drive. They were about midfield. Penalty got called. Inside that penalty was another penalty. Those two penalties led to someone on the sideline yelling at the refs to get three more penalties. And then all heck broke loose on the sideline. There was fighting. It led to threats. It led to, to confrontation, potential fights. Like, it was one of the more ugly things I had seen. And that is what gives semi-pro football a bad name. Exactly. Let's be honest. But I sat here last week, and I said, the Cavs, this game is, is going to reflect what they do. The Cavs are a young team. If they're, if they're winning, their youth will allow them to win. If they're losing, their, lo their youth will cause them to lose. And sure enough, once they got rid of all the outside noise, once halftime came back and they were able to collect themselves, they were so young they forgot about it. They Which said, is a great, yeah, a great they quality said, play. any player. And then when they got down to their core guys, they had a great run game with uh, Jermaine, I think it's Jermaine Quisenberry. He is a beast running the ball. He's, he's, he's smaller, he's shifty, no one could get him. They had some fast receivers that if they could get the ball in the open, they could make some plays. They had a, a tough defense, especially the front the front seven, or maybe even the front eight. I, I don't know what defense they were in, really. <coughs> was was flying around, making hits. They didn't have a passer. Bobby Haynes played quarterback, but he, he wasn't a passer. He was just standing in the pocket, checked down, and Do then you know run. what happened to, uh, I, I believe it was Scotty. Was well, there. Scotty actually played. He actually came in there at the end. I don't know what the change was for. But and by that point, it was already over. Once the, the Spartans retook that lead, it was a wrap. But I, I was very surprised by the Calvary, and I want to see more from them moving forward, and I want to see more from the Spartans moving forward too because apparently they're getting Evan back. They're getting some of those pieces back. So it, I would it like to be. add a, a, few, a few points here. Um, I had a, a discussion on the, the Kentuckiana semi-pro page earlier Monday or Tuesday of why Evan Harvey is Evan Harvey. He is the glue of that team. He is the oh, he is the Tim the Tim Tebow effect or uh, some other player. You know, just when when like Tim Tebow would come into to the game, you could you would literally see everybody mm -hmm. in the stadium come right. up and right. rise to the occasion. And then one more point I want to add is the Cavs. I mean, all that fighting on the sideline they. They have a pretty good coach on that side. I believe his name is Greg Taylor. Greg Taylor, yeah. And uh, he, he kept him in line. I mean, he, there's only one of them. Yeah, to yeah. hark back to what I was saying about Six the coaches, lack of coaches, yeah, yeah. he's one of them. And it's tough. It's tough to maintain. Moving on. Airborne got a forfeit win over the Stallions. The bit of irony, the thing I find in it, is I believe a lot of the things that made the Stallions even be a team are now with the Airborne. The uh, Fury, the Tennessee Fury beat the Wolfpack 6 to nothing. Um that game has little – those teams have little separation. They're just down there in Nashville just – just They're beating each other up. Yeah, beating – but they're not even – the Fury have a strong run game with Cody Woodmore and a couple of those other guys. They don't have a passing game. Their defense is questionable at times. The Wolfpack have a great defense, no offense. I, I, they're winning games 12-6, 6-0, losing games 6-0. When you don't have an offense, I've said this 100 times, when you don't have an offense, a 6-0 lead is like a 20-0 lead. Correct. You get down to the Cane 6-8, you get down 8-0, that's two scores. Because I'm telling you, you're not scoring on a two-point conversion if you don't have a kicker. Uh, Move. Speak, speaking of kicker, why was the uh, – Spartans keep – bragging about they had the best kicker. Why was it a 18 point game? Should, should he, he, he was on vacation. Oh, okay. He's good. He's okay. good. He's probably the best. He's, he's definitely the best kicker in the MSFA. Next week, process of game of the week. What? Well, it's kind of easy to be the best kicker when, it is, when you're the only kicker in the MSFA. <laughs> I, I think the Airborne have one, but I've not seen much yeah. of him. Next week, game of the week. We're starting at the gate hot. Titans at the Spartans. Revenge? Or is it going to be repeat? Oh. You going to win? Brian, Brian Moser, I stole your I stole your little graphic with that uh, quote. Oh, Evans God. back. Does it change everything? I don't know. Pump your brakes. Pump your brakes. Because he's going to come in. He's going to be. He's not rusty because he's been playing overseas. Jet but, lag. But tired. Jet lag. Is, is it? I, I don't know when he comes back. Yeah. I don't know. Is he coming in right before the game? Has he been back a couple days? Does he get to practice with the team? The Spartans. They're hungry. They're getting mocked for that loss. Titans. They're over there doing the mocking. Are they going to keep the same hunger? It's a big rematch. I think it's going to come out. I think the Titans are actually going to come out to a lead. 
I think the kicker is going to make a difference. I think I think Titans are going to jump out maybe six nothing. Mm-hmm. Actually, I, I don't think the kicker's even going to be there. That's going to be a big. That's going to be a big uh, downfall. But I do think it's going to be a little different. Sorry, Mike Scott. Sorry, guys from the Titans. You're going to hate me for this. I got Spartans winning twenty to fourteen. Revenge is sweet. And I have to agree with you. Like Spartans losing be smart to them, to, to them two, two weeks ago, stumbling against yeah. the. It's stumbling against the Cavs. Yeah, they're they're hungry. Hey, if they I'm wrong, are, I'm wrong, yeah. and I give you all the props in the world. So the real question is, uh, who gets the trophy at the, at 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 the end of the day? If they split, I don't know. Why are you even giving a trophy <laughs> for that? Get out of here. Airborne at Hurricanes. I hear a lot. I, I don't give the Hurricanes enough or the, the Airborne enough love. Now's your chance to prove it. You play the number one team in the MSFA. You play the best defense in the MSFA. The best. Can you withstand it? No. Does the Airborne have enough offense no. to score on that? The, the Canes, albeit in probably garbage time with backup players, they allow about six points a game. They allow one touchdown. Can you can you beat them six? Is can the Canes offense going to show up? Are you, are you going to shut them out? Because that's what you're going to do. You're going to beat them six nothing. I don't know. Now Airborne does have number seventeen. Number seventeen is going to be in there flying. Can can he make the air, the the Canes make enough mistakes so they can score off that. Can he fly in, mm. hit the running back, hit Banks, hit uh, the, the other ones they got? I'm drawing a blank on their name. Can he hit Corker, Michael Thomas? Can he knock that ball loose? Can he create a turnover? Because they do got good secondary. If the Airborne get their hands on interception, it's going to flip field position at the very least. They might even take it for the house and score. Can they Can they take advantage of that secondary gap? Can, can the... Can the Airborne's offense put up enough points? I'm going to say no. 20 to 6. Canes win this one. Moving on. Let me add in on that. The only way the Airborne have a chance is number 17 pops the quarterback in the mouth. Like you have to pop the quarterback in the mouth every play. You have to get in their head. You have to get them rattled. Like you have to be, you have to make them think faster and react even faster and throw a stupid interception. That's the only way they will. And even then, I don't know if it's enough because that's going to be one score. Moving on, Calvary at Coates. Cavs building off that momentum. A lot of people say you can't take anything from a loss. I say you can, especially if you're rebuilding like the Cavs are. Yes. Or you're building. I, I won't say rebuilding, but you're building to something. The Coats, they're on the edge. Cavs, all you got to do is you give them a push. I don't know what that'll do to them. The Coats are really struggling everywhere. Cavs got that defense. They got running game that's going to put up some points. If you don't have a top defense or a nice defensive levels, you're, you're not going to stop their run game. Cavs 38, Colts 6. You got Rampage at the Fury. Fury's going to get a forfeit win. You got Stallions at Wolfpack. Wolfpack's going to get a forfeit win. All right, that's it for the MSFA. We're moving on to the BCFL. Moving on. We got anything to address in the chat before we move on? Uh, No. Uh, I saw a little while ago they were discussing the best uh, pocket quarterback in the area. Um, you it had to be Brent. You have to take, yeah, me and like, Brent, probably. Yeah, he's if, if, come up. If he's dedicated, and nothing yeah. against him, he's just very busy. He's got a full time job. He's got a kid. If he can dedicate the time to practice and getting on the same page with his line and receiver, I think Brent has to be heads and shoulders the, the best pocket passer. Like, if you were going into a flag or a seven on seven oh, yeah. with receivers he knew, he'd carve you up. Moving on. Moving on to the BCFL. We're just going to, we don't really have much to say. Shout out to, uh, I think his name's Slash, the, the commissioner. He's always reaching out, wants to get some things going, communicate, promote that league. I'm always here to promote, try to make something come out of that. Probably more the Marion County Crusaders. I don't think they're going to need much promotion. If you don't mind, let me jump in here real quick. Okay. I'd like to thank everybody that's viewing viewing tonight. We have like 45 viewers right, right now. If you all could share this video one time on any form that you are, let's, let's definitely just try to grow this page so one time for the one time yeah so it mean just just help us out give help us a like a love and share it just one time and that you know that's 45 more shares that's that's potentially 45 more people into the chat here so exactly so he's the businessman of this i'm just here for the pleasure all right football is what i enjoy we're going to talk about it. bcfl the glads they couldn't choke this one away they get a forfeit win over the colonels still folded tanks get a forfeit win over the lightning tanks are back tanks are trying to compete with the greatest Tanks are looking good. What's the Lightning doing? Are you folded Lightning? Or are you just just, just dialing in at home game? We need some answers. Let's get I need some answers. answers. I, next week will give me a big answer. 
No, we'll do that later. I think they get a forfeit win. <laughs> if they sit, if they get to, they get to reap this forfeit win after giving the last two forfeit losses. I got questions. I got questions as if they make the playoffs because they're not. It, make, you well, can't no, make the playoffs. You let's say forfeit. they don't. Well, but but the commissioner's like, hey, we really need that eight team to no, give the Crusaders. No, a, you give like, the Crusaders a bye week. Call yeah, it a day. They made their bed. If anything, you give it. You go back to the Piranhas or the Colonels and see if you can throw something together. So. Uh, the chat here did say the Lightning, I believe he's referring to to the Lightning, they said they have folded. They are folded. So. Sold up shop. So we'll get to that point here in a minute. I got some questions with that. Dukes beat the Gate. The Cincinnati Dukes beat the Cincinnati Gators 13-12. to 12. I view that as its own little Cincinnati rivalry. The, the Gators used to be a little bit ahead of the Dukes. The Dukes got revenge last year. This one looked like it could have went both ways. I don't know how these points got scored, but I see the Dukes there with an odd number. It means you got a kicker. Mm -hmm. Hey, that means something now. Uh, now, the question for the Dukes, can the Dukes, coming off, they, they, they shocked everybody, they beat the Comets, they, they got a win here, they keep winning, they're, right now they're sitting at the four seed, which means they'd play the Comets again, they'd host the Comets in the playoffs if everything stood as is. Can they compete? Can they win that first game? Can they get to that second weekend, and can they get in there and competing with the Tanks, Glads, or is it still just that three-team race? Yeah. Gators, you've kind of shown us where you are. You're, you, you've smacked these teams, and you've gotten smacked by these teams. So you're just kind of in the middle there. Home, I mean, I, I don't see much more. And, and they, they lost to the Dukes in the playoffs last year. Are they going to be able to get? I, I believe if everything held up, they would play, I want to say, the. I, I'm, I have to look at the divisions because I don't know if the division winners get seeds one, two, three. Yeah. But I can imagine, yeah. I can imagine the the Gators aren't going to have an easy playoff round unless they start winning. They'll probably get knocked out in the first round. Oh, easily. Yeah. Comets versus the King Comets versus the Tri-State Saints. Comets win huge, thirty-eight to nothing. Are the Comets back? Comets lost a lot of guys, went to the fire. I'm I'm holding on hope those guys are going to come back. Those guys are whoever left are chilling with their new team, and they're probably not playing much because they came in late. Are they going to say, hey, here's my Comets in the playoffs? Let's get back on that. Or were the comments so deep that the Dukes game was just a, a freak, and and now they're moving on? Is it just a one-off? Uh, Saints are still struggling. Yeah, if you don't mind, uh, jumping back to the Lightning. I mean, I I hate to keep going back to a folded team, but Billy Cole, like our like our guy, says they're playing this week on a brand new turf field. Now, so, if I'm not mistaken, Billy, text us in because don't the Lightning have the Colonels, which is a folded team? I'm sorry. Uh, I saw a date, but I'm having trouble struggling back back up. Yeah, Billy, let us know, man. But That's right. like it was a, it was a July date, I think. So well, I mean, maybe. Yeah. Like I said, I've not heard they folded. I just heard they didn't want to travel and get their brains beat in by the top two teams in the league. Girl pair. The Saints, though, you got two wins. You got them given to you. Can you earn one? I need you to see you earn one. You're in the playoffs. Life's smooth. You're a seventh seed. You'll probably end up going to play the tanks. Can you get a win? Can you earn a win? Can you take it from the Dukes? Can you take it from the Gators? I don't know who. I'm not sure with the exact schedule off the top of the head. But can you take it? I need to see a lot. I, I like the I like the Saints. I went and watched them play once. They seem to be they seem to be like a better, a, a newer version of the Colts. But I need you to earn the win. At least the Colts and all their shenanigans. They they got a a half a win by beating whatever was remaining of the Carter County Wildcats last year. So they've got to at least taste it. I need you guys to taste it as an organization. <coughs> Crusaders. The Crusaders got the rare two win. They beat the Piranhas. Got a win from that. Then they went on and they did something that I wish a lot more teams would do and I cannot praise enough. Both them and the Pitbulls of the PFL said, hey, we're, we're getting wins already. We can sit back and rest on our laurels and say, hey, win. It's going to go on the record. We're going to move up. We're going to mm -hmm. remain undefeated. Or... We can venture out and we can play each other. Have nothing to gain, nothing to lose. Other, I mean, I guess you could have injuries, but as far as record goes. I would say there's nothing to win but everything to lose, barring injury. But I, yeah. it depends on what you're wanting. If you're wanting the, the correct recognition that both, I believe, these pit bulls and these crusaders are wanting, this is what you do. And they gain my respect playing this game, 100%. I've talked to other yeah. teams, and I'll touch on it later. You have this opportunity in front of you. Props to the Crusaders. Not only did you do this, you traveled. And from my understanding, that wasn't a close travel. Exciting game. 
two good quarterbacks. Yeah, that guy. I think his name's Quavo. Or man, that's a rapper. I don't know what's his name. Uh, I don't I know. Couldn't it's hear it something on the feed, like that. Yeah. Um, and and you got Tanner Day. Two solid quarterbacks. The numbers show it was a close game. That number one, we had his brother on here for the Crusaders, playmaker. The receiver, actually, all the receivers are playmakers. It was an exciting game. Both, like I said, both solid quarterbacks. I was close. I called it 28 26. Both, there was two point separation both ways. But prop, once again, props to the Crusaders. I actually watched that game live on their feed. I believe, I can't remember what Facebook page it was, but I, like, I watched it live mm -hmm. and it was a very quality game. Yeah. Like, it, and props I, to the I wouldn't Pit say Bulls. it was like a college level game, but like a JUCO college hey. level game. Like they, there were some big plays. That's what every said, team yeah. should aspire to be. Yes. Big props to the uh, Canton Pit Bulls and the Crusaders. Right, absolutely. Big props. Moving on. Next week, game of the week. Marion County Crusaders at the Tanks. You got to travel. They could travel pretty well. They proved so that already. a telling matchup. It's going to really tell me a lot what this BCFL season holds. If they go out there and the Crusaders win easily, shut it down. The season's over. Just go ahead and give them the trophy. Let's save everybody's month of July and August. Let's just play a uh, second and third place championship. Yeah, exactly, huh? exactly. The Tanks offense, if the offense can score. Now, I don't want to take anything away from the Crusaders' defense, but I think the Tanks can score on them. The Tanks can move the ball. Job Swords, at quarterback, can move the ball on them. It's going to be a, it's going to be a good quarterback matchup. I put a poll on there, and it got some good results. It was it was it heavily favored Tanner, but um, but I, I think it really sparked up Swords. Yeah, I think we're going to see uh, the the, the Crusaders. How do the Crusaders build on this? They build a, a, a team ranked very high, in that they beat the number one team in the PAFL tier two. Do they build on it, or do they say, "Hey, resting on my laurels. We won. Hey, let's, let's let our guard down, and the tanks come in and, and grab one." I don't think the Crusaders are going to attack the team. I think it's going to be a good one. They're going to lay it on. Get out of here. I think it's going to be a good one. Marion County Crusaders, 28. Westport Mouth Tanks, 20. I think it's going to be a good one. Oh, yeah, that, that is – I would love to travel to see that, but why yeah. say no? That's like five hours away. Is it? Yeah, it's not fun. Uh, the Kentucky Colonels at the Western West Virginia Lightning. They're going to get this win because it's a fold, but I, it's, it's shady. I don't like it. So in the chat here, they some people actually said the Lightning tried to schedule a game, but it was a last-minute scheduling just to Sabres. maybe hey, maybe Sabres. trying to make themselves David Mosley look, is that your name better? You're 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 free, I think. I want, <laughs> I want the Sabers playing because I want to know if I'm right or if I'm wrong. Are you are you a good team and I've just been overhyped, or a bad team and I've over been hyping you? Or are you a good team and we're both right and we got to prove Billy Cole and his band of haters wrong? And know. that will also answer the question about the Lightning. Are they folded? Are they around? Yes, what exactly. Is, we don't want to wait till I believe exactly. Cody but said they're gonna uh, sit around. July Oh, they're going to sit around and get this win against the Colonels. Best believe that. Gladiators, you can't choke this one away again. You got the Piranhas. Four-foot win. Dukes at the Saints. Dukes are the better team, but Dukes let team – I don't know what it is. I haven't seen the Dukes play, but they let teams hang around. All their scores are 8-6. Like 8-6, 14-0, 14-6. Yeah. Uh, six nothing zero six. I, 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 what are you going to do? Should be close, but it shouldn't be. But it's going to be. Can the Saints get it done? I don't think so. Duke's going to win twenty two. Saints six. And I, I, I see the Saints players. Like I see their highlight tapes, whatever. They have a lot of heart. There's heart there. It, like I feel if the ball bounces their way one or two times. It could be a different story, and the Dukes are going to clam up and probably choke that one away. So I'm going to put that one on upset, on upset alert. Saints. I'm about to kill first, a bug. Don't call Pete on me. Get it. It's gone now. It's right here. So I'm trying to see how the playoffs would, would fold out here. Um, you would have... Are there two divisions in the BCS? Well, there's three divisions. Three divisions. There's three. The, tank, the Crusaders would obviously be number one. The Tanks would be two. The glads, the gladiators would probably slide in there at four because they're in the same division as the tanks. I imagine they would get quote unquote the wild card. Um, probably the comets would be that third seed. Then you'd have Dukes at five, Gators at six, and uh, Saints at seven, 
we'll pretend the Lightning get to play, just so it has even eight. The Crusaders would dominate those. The Tanks would beat the Saints. Comets would demolish the, Gla the, the Gators. And the Gladiators would beat the Duke. So it, it's, we're still getting down to our four teams. Even if the Comets are back, your Final Four, any way you cut, it's going to be uh, the Crusaders, the Tanks, the Comets, and the Gladiators with very telling probably Tanks and Crusaders. So championship game this weekend. Let's watch it. If it's not close, <laughs> like I said, shut it down. But I think, I think it's going to be close. I think Tanks, Swords, they're going to make a game of it. So um, what's that? How do, how do divisions like split up then? Is it there's is it this? The I don't remember. Satyrs and I don't remember the direction of it all, but I think uh, the there was the tanks, gladiators, lightning. Okay. Then comets, comets, gators, dukes, and I want to say piranhas, colonels, like like the, and the crusaders. Yeah. Okay. It, it's remotely next to each other. Moving I'm on. Kind of confused to why there's. Three divisions and an eight-man team. I don't know. Or well, was it, was, it, nine? it was twelve at one. It was, no, it's ten. You're ten. I, I don't know. Ten, it, nine. I'm eight, probably missing seven. somebody, and I'll probably hear about it in the. They'll be the mess down to six by next week. You got two losing. You got two folding. All right, GDFL. Moving on. <laughs> you must know something I do not. Saints, you? No. Let's hope not. I hope not. All right, GDFL. Just recap. We got the Mississippi Road Warriors beat the Memphis Blast 38 to 8. Road Warriors moved to 5 and 1. The Blast fall to 3 and 4. The uh, Road Warriors got a really solid defense. They're giving up uh, less than 10 points a game. It's going to win you some games here in the GDFL. Playoff win too. Middle Tennessee Bulldogs taking on the Tennessee Lightning Bolts, winning 24 to 6. It was a matchup. TF the the Tennessee Spring Leagues, the TFA versus the MTFL. Dogs moved to 5 and 1. Bolts fall to 2 and 4. It was close. It was close. 24 to 6. Now, the dogs do have one of those defenses that once you get down, it's hard to come back from. Yep. But this one shocked me. I don't know if it's because it's at the boats or if the dogs are coming through some growing pains. And I don't want to put anything negative on them because they have a great organization, ran really well, great players, but they're making changes. They're always, it's a revolving door of players. You have a couple of key guys. But even though all those key guys spent most of the season or earlier part of the season in arena ball. So now you got parts just moving in. It can't be easy. I know if anybody can do it, it'll be Scott and Ricky. Uh, but I think they're just going to go through some growing pains. I think this is it. Only problem is the schedule does not get any easier. But that, that plays in their favor because as they come in into the stride and to the playoffs, They'll be full swing. And, I, I, I'm, I'm right yeah. there with it. Uh, uh, it's just the only question is, it always it's always the question in sports, whether it be semi-pro or the pro levels, when a guy goes in and starts, is he ready for that backup? Yeah. Is Nick Foles ready to go back to being backup quarterback? Man just won a Super Bowl, Super Bowl MVP. <laughs> is he ready to go backup quarterback when Mark when uh, Carson Wentz comes back, number three player in the NFL top 100? Are you willing to make that? You got to, but are you happy about it? We'll discuss that in August. Yep. Georgia Crush versus River City Pythons. Crush win 21 to nothing. Crush moved to 5 and 2. Pythons fall to 1 and 6. Crush back to their winning ways. Crush dropped a couple of games back to back against the Eagles and the Rockets. The Pythons seem to, to be a strong team. I think the Pythons could win against a lot of these mid level teams that we do talk about, but they've just had the one of the toughest schedules. Which, one, which makes a team tough. It does. But, but if you, you can't get in the playoffs, yeah, you gotta it get, does yeah. nothing for you, and they're not yeah. going to get in the playoffs. Which which <laughs> kind of sucks for them because they could definitely win a playoff game or two. Rocket. Uh, the Huntsville Rockets take on the Chattanooga Eagles. Rockets win 34-14. to 14. They're It was solid. a tough West, extreme West battle. The extreme West in the GDFL has to be the toughest division. That's why I don't want to take anything away from the Tennessee Lightning Bolts. In that division, you have four teams. You have the Huntsville Rockets, undefeated, number one team in the country. Great team. Middle Tennessee Bulldogs, I think they're like 31-1, and 32-1, maybe even more than that. They got a tie and two losses, though. I do believe, in their four or five seasons. That Chattanooga played. Eagles, last year's GDFL runners-up, you just get stuck in a, a bad division. And you're three and four, but I can't hate on it. Because no. two losses came to the Bulldogs, two losses came to the Rockets. And then you have the Tennessee Lightning Bolts who are probably the least inferior team in that division, could probably be a playoff contender anywhere else, but you just got to play these teams over and over. Uh, 
It's kind of like the East and the NBA. They beat up on each other and kill people the in the East finals. or the West. I'm sorry. I was about to say, <laughs> I'm about to just shut this whole broadcast down. West, West. Eagles hung in there early. They got up to, I think they got a 6 0 lead. It stayed, it stayed close pretty early. Rockets moved 7 0. Eagles fought a 3 and 4. Eagles can still make the playoffs. They just need some luck to go their way. Starkville still, still, Starkville still dogs against the Arkansas Steelers. I think that was a forfeit win. It, it, it said 14 0, but I talked to someone at the Steel Dogs. I think the Steelers may have uh, folded. Maybe. Tri County Outlaw taking on the Madison Generals. Outlaws, 40 0 win. I'm, I'm, I'm curious about the Outlaws. No, I don't think you're the best team in the GDFL. No, I don't think you're a top team in the country, but I like your team. I think that's where that quarterback, Dominique White, went. They have some strong defense. I think they got a lot of guys who played, who I watched in the spring from the Raiders, those type of teams. Yeah. They're getting it together. They don't travel well. That's my concern. The Outlaws are 5-2. and two. They, they, they seem to be getting together. They won their division, which I don't like. That you Well, I guess they're later in the season than I think, but they won their division already. I think they either have it won – or if they they have to get blasted next week to lose. I haven't seen anything about them <laughs> um, clinching, the, clinching their division. I do have concerns regarding their travel. Uh, they, they, a lot of teams come to me and say, hey, we only lost this game because we was only there with 20 players. And they, they, they tell me that like I'm supposed to take that <laughs> as a, oh, well, thank goodness. No, yeah. that's concerning. Yeah. You go to the Middle Tennessee Bulldogs with 20 players and no line, which is what they told me they had. It's a bloodbath. Yeah, I mean the Gladiators <laughs> tried that. Oh, the Gladiators. Well, we only we're a good team. We only, only traveled with players. eighteen. Yeah, whatever. That's fine. When you're playing these bad teams, when you went and played the Lightning, when you played the Saints, that's fine. Yeah. Go to Marion County with eighteen. I say it every week. Go to Marion County with eighteen. Go to the Tanks with eighteen. I know you beat them there the first time. But travel poorly to some of these good teams. Go to Canton Pit Bulls with 18, and you're probably getting 60 hung on you. Or better yet, play at home against Canton Pit Bulls with 18. Play, you're, yeah. You're going to get blasted. Play anywhere. <laughs> play at your mom's house on 4th of July with 18 against these top-tier teams, it is not, and you're getting blasted. It is not our fault that you guys do not travel well. Generals. A loss is a loss. Generals fall to 0-5-1. They have a tie. They, they shocked me with that tie. They've only scored 20 points all season. 20. They played six games, scored 20 points. I'm not a math major, but it's not good. Oklahoma Thunder beat the Midwest Chargers 32 to nothing. Thunder's moved to 5-2. and two. They've only lost two games. I want to invest in the Thunder. The Thunder's that stock that's flashy, that, you're, that you trust. But they're concerning because they've lost two games to the Outlaws. Everyone tells me they're back. But are they back to their winning ways? Or are they back national championship winners? I don't think so. They might be back, but are the Outlaws just that good? I, yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. So either A, the, the Thunder are this good, and the Outlaws are this good. If that's the case, if you're the Rockets and the Bulldogs, you got to watch out. My, but the more realistically, I'm feeling that the Thunder was this good. This group went to the Outlaws, making them both about this good. Mm -hmm. And even though they can beat up on each other and beat up on everybody in that division, when they go to play the top two teams, it's no bueno. Yeah. The Chargers sit at one and six, but a birdie told me something. I heard that they are folded. Who's that? Midwest Chargers. Chargers. I think they're out of Missouri. Have they folded? If you're part of the GDFL, Scott, write in, text in, message me. Did they fold? Not that it matters. They're not in the playoffs. They're one and six. But did they fold? I'm just curious. I believe we had them ranked pretty low as well. Like, yeah, I, I ain't ranked them. They had did 21, 22 million. But, I mean, they got, they're the one, if I'm not mistaken, they're the, they're the ones that went to the Bulldogs with 12 and the game got called at halftime. Speaking of the other outlaws. The other. The Oklahoma outlaws beat the Missouri Cyclones 48-8. to eight. Like, like I said, are they the real deal? They're 6-1, and one, lost one game. I want to say to the Road Warriors, but they got depth for the playoffs. You know, because if both need. these Thunders and the Outlaws have split and just taken all the talent, is that depth going to get you through the semifinals and the championship? It might win you one, the first round playoff game. But like you said, second, third championship right. game, probably Cy not. Cyclones, The Cyclones downfall. They started hot. I had faith in them. I had them in my top five in the GDFL, and then they just went south. What happened? They lose players? I don't know. Do we know what city they're based out of? I do not. But I do know there's trouble afoot. I've heard that the last couple of games they've had some problems with their players. 
I had to make some cuts, had to make some changes. I don't have much information on that, but uh, like I said, a little birdie told me that there's some there's some there's some trouble in River City, not the pythons, the, the cyclones. Uh, Rumbling, just what I was saying. <laughs> uh, what's going on there? If you're if you're having to kick off players, if you're having to issue a public apology to fans, what's going on there? But no questions. But but hey, hey they're uh, three and three. On that side, you do give the the organization credit. Yeah, hey, absolutely. Yeah. I'm not I'm not having a problem with it. I just got questions about it. Lexton Red Dragons. They took on the uh, Central Ohio Cavalry. 167 to nothing. Are they back? Or are they just playing crappy teams again? I don't know. Well, they got a pretty strong quarterback. Speaking of winning winning the division, they won the division two weeks ago when yeah, they were 3-1. Yeah. Because them and the Erie Express got put in the two easiest divisions known to man. Red Dragons moved to 5-1. And, and only that's have not that their one. fault. Just, just, no, just it's to, not. Just I mean, clarify, it's just yeah. what happens when yeah. you have a league that's predominantly Southern. Yeah. And a few Northern teams come in. You open your door up and you say – Hey, I'll let you in because you're in this general facility. Mm -hmm. So, right. just to uh, jump in on the comments here, the Cyclones Going were... Back. Oh, the, com oh, the, the comments. Oh, comments. 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 Comments section in the right. chat here. What's going on, uh, They said the Cyclones were supposed to play. They posted something online. Uh, did you have them play in the Lightning? Is is that who they're the playing? The Cyclones? Yeah. No, that's who... Oh, the, what, like the West Virginia Lightning? Or the lightning bolts. The lightning bolts. Well, I thought they were supposed to play the Chargers, but I okay. thought the Chargers folded. Well, they said they haven't posted playing online this week. So, no, I mean, maybe, I, maybe, I don't sure. know. And uh, apparently, there are some big trades in the GDFL. Uh, between... So, what's the deal with the GDFL? Is there contracts? Is there a signing deadline? Can you trade players? I mean, I would say yes. That's I mean, cool. Yeah. I want to say, who's yeah. trading who? Can we get that? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying who to scroll back that? up. Is it Scott? It was Scott, uh, are you trading people. It was Ryan Stark was oh, was, Ryan. was involved Ryan, who are you in trade it. With? No, no, no. He was just referring to it like the trade. Um, but say, who's um, he going to trade with? Lexton has no other teams around to trade with. It was a trade with the the Nashville Bulldogs or the. Uh, Tennessee. I'm about to say that Bulldogs. sounds like something Scott and Ricky would and, uh, work up some so, kind of trade. I'm trying to scroll back up, but I'm, is this a GDFL thing or is this just them? I. Uh, People do the, are, do people the GFL are, do trades? People are kind of confused. Like, some people are are saying, yes, they, they do trade. And some people are saying, like, what? What are you guys talking about? So I mean, it sounds cool. I mean, like, the problem I, feel is, if you, I feel if you sign a contract, you are committed to that right. team. That team can trade that trade your contract. I, I get it. Yeah. And, and the, the, the understanding is there. My thing is, going back to the beginning, the problem with semi-pro. They can say no. How, yeah, they can yeah. say no. They can just say don't want to do it. You're not paying them. You can take none from them. Maybe the GFL pay them, but is it enough to to make you go from a good team to a less good team or vice versa? Yeah. But maybe maybe you go to a better team, but your rows less. Is it is it enough? You have nothing to take from them. So uh, that I mean, their jersey. It, that but they, <laughs> I mean, it's cool if it is. I like it if you can get teams to buy in. But like we talked with the the drafts with leagues having draft. All you have to do is say, I don't want to play here, and guess what? You don't have to play there. Now, maybe you can't play that year, but you can go wherever you want. Oh, you but you but you will play that year, just not in that league. You can be right, like right, yeah, you yeah. can be like Cincinnati and play for yeah, four yeah. four different teams in one week. So I don't I don't know. I'm very interested to see. Um, Red Dragons moved to five and one. Cavs fall to one and six. I heard they got a young, talented team. Numbers so otherwise. Uh, Red Dragons have locked up that division, as I stated. Moving on, the Buffalo Spartans taking on the West Virginia Smash. Spartans won 34 to 28. Smash got rich somehow. The Smash, I believe, benefited from the West Virginia Ironmen from the PAFL folding. The Smash, Somewhere. no pun intended, were getting smashed 70 to 6. Every rip. 50 to nothing. Out of nowhere, they're putting up 55, 28, and 28. They got better somehow. Maybe their quarterback they was off almost. <laughs> I, actually, I think they were only 27. I think they lost the Red Dragons 29 27. But that's that's huge. Red Dragons beat you 70 to 6. They come to your place and you only lose by two? Something changed. I think they got rich off the Ironman. Sadly enough, it's too late. But Spartans positive are four for and next three. year. Can they get in the playoffs? I don't know. What's up? But positive for next year. Yeah, positive for next yeah. year. Unless it, it falls apart. Unless a, a new team from West Virginia pops up and steals all the thunder. The Express, number three team in the GDFL. Beat the Cobras 37 to nothing to move to 7 and 0. They won that division. The Cobras fall to 2 and 4. They struggled. Now, I gave them an out. You last week, 
I gave the the Cobras an out. I had heard that their starting quarterback got hurt. If that happens, I'm there for you. Aaron Rodgers get hurt, Packers struggle. Even young uh, Deshaun Watson gets hurt, Texans struggle. Yep. So you lost your quarterback, you started to struggle. I was there for you. I said, hey, I get it. But what did I hear? Oh, our quarterback's not hurt. No, oh, he's, he's been starting. He's perfectly fine. The man can walk on two hands. And now you get blown out 37 to nothing. I, I can't give you an excuse. I gave you one. You argued with me. So now it's gone. And now I'm just upset at you because you lost 37 to nothing with your starting quarterback. Hey, and I am falling in love with that Erie Express team more and more and more. Yeah, they I, might I like have a do. easy, they might have, I'm, quote, easy schedule. I'm concerned with the playoffs. I don't know. Man. I'm concerned when they start getting into that playoff, start playing some real teams, start playing these teams that have actually been beating up on themselves down in the south. But in their well, in their defense, teams them being you know top seed, teams team have to travel them for the first two weeks. They so may. travel might so, be a good point. Good rough. point. I'd be interested to see how that works. And uh, just to uh, add on to the traveling that we spoke about last segment, Ryan Stark said they only travel with 25 to the smash. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't matter. Because that means you, if you can't travel 25 to West Virginia, how are you traveling to Alabama? Or Erie, Michigan. Erie. Or is it Michigan? Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania? Yeah. Either I, way. I mean, how, like, uh, that's my thing. You, you can't use it. You can't use it as an excuse over here and then get upset when it gets used as a deterrent over here. I'm just saying. If you travel 25, you travel 25, that's fine. I, I get it. It's semi-pro. But don't expect me to take that from you and be like, oh, I understand now. No, you got to get your travel right. There will not be an asterisk next to your yes. name on that one. All right, next week, just kind of go through these games. We got the same Cobra team with their starters taking on the West Virginia Smash. Like I said, it's a new Smash team. I think it's a different Smash team. They did say the Smash Bennett did did. I know they got a quarterback got and a kicker. And they said they had a pretty solid wide receiver as well. Yeah. So pretty so, much what they said in the comments here is they got everybody from the Iron. Right, well, there we are. Well, I, we'll get to it later. There's also a, a Pitt East Storm that benefited from those guys too. I'll touch yep. on that a little bit later. Uh, I got the Smash winning 40, Cobras 28. That's my, my thing. The Central Ohio Calvary taking on the Express. Are the Express? What do the Express do? The Express got a team they know they can beat fairly easily. They've already got the division locked up. Their playoff seating's probably the locked in as well. Probably. Do Cruise you control. call it a day and just say we're going pure backups? But knowing that's going to hurt chemistry, it's going to hurt any chances at any national rankings, no matter what ones you follow, if you lose to that team, which I don't think you will. So I think you put them in there, you get that early lead, you go balls to the wall. You try to get that early big lead, and you call it a day in the second half. You do I, what the NFL does in week yeah, 15. I got the Express yeah. winning 56 to nothing. Lightning bolts at the Dragons. I don't want to take. I said here, I just gave a little bit of a rant about how I like the bolts. They just got the short end of the stick. Vice versa goes to the Dragons. They got a decent squad. They got the long end of the stick, if you will, when they got an easier division. This game will be close. I, like, I still like the Dragons kicker. I like his quarterback. If they're still playing, the numbers – have dwindled a little bit on the points scored since mm -hmm. they've started playing some legit competition. Have the Dragons winning 28, Boats 24. The Chattanooga Eagles taking on the Alabama Sabres. I like the Sabres. Sabres are a solid team. Eagles are a solid team. I think this is a good matchup. I think, but the Eagles do what they do do well is when they're not playing the Bulldogs, when they're not playing the Rockets, they take care of their opponents. They I beat them. They beat the Georgia Crush. Shocked me. Yep. They're going to get a win here. I say 24-18. I did see in the comments that the Eagles are on their seventh or eighth quarterback this season. That's so, impressive on its yeah. own. It's going to like I, I can't be a hypocrite. It's scary, the fact that you're there, but the fact that you're still churning out quarterbacks some way. Either you have a very quarterback friendly system, mm -hmm. or you just have some great athletes. So I give them props, but at the same time, I'm going to give them a little bit of a. Eh, a little wag of the finger. Yeah. I'm a little concerned. I, I might be selling some of that Eagle <laughs> stock. Yeah. But I have them winning 24-18. Memphis Blast versus the Tri-County Outlaws. The Outlaws, they got it wrapped up. They just have to not lose this by 33, I believe, is the number. And they, they call it a day. The Blast, they're, they're, they give it a hope. They're going to give it a try. They're going to lose 32-6. to Home game for the Outlaws. They're going to win that one. A Rematch. The game I wished I could go to. 
Not the tanks, not the current, not the tanks, crusaders, not anything else we got, not hornets, uh, fire that's coming up later. Dogs at rockets. The first one was great. I only saw very few clips of it, but just following along, it, it's one I wished I could have been to. Game of the week by far in the GDFL. Rockets have to go, or the dogs have to go to the rockets this time. It's going to be a good one. It's not going to be as close. The Rockets or, or the dogs have been just struggling a little bit at times. I think the Rockets are going to win this one 26-20. I think it's probably 2020 going into the fourth. Yeah. Rockets pull away. Dogs just can't find that. I still think the dogs can win. The dogs can retake dominance here. They can take the division. I just, if it was at, if everything happened the way it did last game in Huntsville and then this was in Nashville, I say, here's your chance. But I just, I got to give it to that home team. And I think the ball is going to bounce the other way. I I have faith in the Bulldogs. Hey, gonna find I, their... look, I'm not, I mean, no disrespect. I have faith that, I mean, there, there's a part of me that says, hey, they can win, and it would not shock me a bit. But if, gun to my head, I got to pick a game here, go in that one. And speaking of the game, if you guys are live streaming the game, go ahead and send us a link so we can. Uh, we'll watch. Yeah, we'll definitely watch that. I'll be out of town. Yeah. Ain't got nothing to do. I'll be watching. River City Pythons at the Madison General. I talked about it. Pythons are a good team with a tough schedule. Generals are not. 22-6 win. Self-explanatory. What? Self-explanatory. Yeah, I ain't going to go much in there. Yeah. Uh, East Alabama Predators taking on the Georgia Crush. Both solid teams. Crush had a little downfall. I think they're back. They lost, like I said, back-to-back. They won two in a row. Make it three. Crush win 27-20. Uh, Spartans, Thunder, and Outlaws appear to have forfeit wins. I know the GFL tries to prevent that from happening. They try to slide some things in there. Are you are you going to have the Outlaws and Thunders play again? I, I, I don't think you would unless you wanted three games, but there's no tiebreakers, so it really doesn't yeah. benefit. Do you have something up your sleeve? Is there another team that's on a bye week that Charles is going to try to make that happen? I feel I mean, by Wednesday we would have probably heard something Probably so. Hey, you can say what you want about the GDFL and how it's ran, and I know that's a little controversial when you're flipping schedules, but it's nice to know that you're a solid team and you're going to have fans to be able to come to a game. Mm -hmm. So let me know if something changes later on. I heard a little secret. I don't know if it's a secret. Heard something. Don't know how true it is. Dogs, dragons. The weekend after the fourth. Maybe the weekend after that, depending on how they're taking it off. Are the Dogs and Dragons finally playing? Ooh. I want to know. Are both teams going to be at full force? I want to know. Is it going to be in Nashville? Is it going to be in Lexington? I need to know. We need to know. I'm going to be there. I got to get to that one. Hey, I got the Bud Light. They're on high schools. We can't do that. Ah, road trips. But I want to know. Is that game happening? Let us know. Let me know if you see anything in there. Kind of just run down to the playoff picture, what it's going to look like. You got the Impact North Division winners, which are going to be the uh, Tri-County Outlaws. The Impact West is the Oklahoma Outlaws. Impact East appears to be the Alabama Sabres. And uh, due to head-to-head, -head, I would imagine the Impact South would be Mississippi Road Warriors. Let me uh, interrupt you real quick. Ryan Stark from the Rec Dragons said that the game is is happening. On what date? Yeah, that's it is, it is in Nashville. Oh, boo. That's uh, a further drive. It's only three hours from here. Still, I made that drive plenty of times. I don't hey, like it. My wife will let me go. She loves it what? there. All right, moving. <laughs> let us know if you got a, a date. We will. We will. All right, so looking at this, I imagine your Outlaws are your one seed, or your Oklahoma Outlaws are your one seed, your Road Warriors are your two, your Sabres are your three, and Tri County will be four. Tri I, I, that'll probably flip back and forth. I don't know how they do it. And then your wild card will be the Starkville Steel Dogs and the Oklahoma Thunder. Could be interesting. Could be one of those ones where you have a Pittsburgh Steelers. You have the Oklahoma Thunder coming from that last wild card position. And I don't know. The way it's set up, they would have to actually play Oklahoma Outlaws. So the travel wouldn't be bad. Nope. But it could be it could be a scary first game. And like we were assuming they were pretty much in the same city as well. So I, I don't know yeah. how far they, yeah. if it's true that yeah. they borrowed some of the players, you can't be too far. Uh the Steel Dogs would have to play the the Mississippi Road Warriors. That's a division game. Those are great games early. No, I'm sorry. I had that completely backwards. One and two would have a bye week. Because I'm under the impression, and speaking with Charles, that it's an NFL style. You have your four division winners on each side, and then you have your two wild cards. So I'm sorry. I, I messed that all up. It would actually be Oklahoma Thunder taking on 
the Sabres, and then it would be the start, the Steel Dogs taking on um, the Outlaws, if, if that's how that stood. So I, I probably should stop guessing. But <clears throat> that's just how the playoff picture's looking. Going into the extreme, the extreme north is the Dragons. The extreme east, the Erie Express have that locked in. The extreme west is still up for, air, is up for grabs. I, I, which, for my impression... Like? It would go to the Rockets because they've beaten the Bulldogs. But if the Bulldogs can pull the win and probably win by more than two, they would probably get that. <clears throat> and then your Extreme South, I imagine, goes to the Crush. Wild cards. You have the Bulldogs. I imagine already locked in. Five and one. I imagine that's already a lock. Now, this other one, it gets iffy. You got the East Alabama Predators versus the Chattanooga Eagles. I want the Eagles in there. I would like to see them in there. But the Predators, they... they uh, they got the I don't, the records are about the same, but I think the Eagles got a few more games to play. Mm-hmm. I could be wrong on that. I'm kind of just guessing at this point because I'm trying to remember what I was reading about. But that's kind of what it's going to look like. Um, I imagine the the Rockets will be the one seed, the Express will be the two seed, Dragons three, Crush four. I get a bull. Uh, hmm. You probably get the Bulldogs and either Crush or Dragons. That'd be pretty interesting. That would be a pretty I'd be interesting. In it. Now, is there a championship game? Like, have you heard? Is it a neutral site game? Uh, Hope, it's highest in Birmingham, team? I believe. Birmingham, Alabama? I believe so. Okay. Be interesting. Speaking of I the... I know uh, nothing of geography, so I have no clue <laughs> how... Is that far from Nashville? I don't know. I, don't I know, know it's far from Erie. It's better hope, you, well, better from hope you're not in it. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> speaking of the Bulldogs-Dragons games, July 7th at Nashville. Uh, I guess that's confirmed. Uh, Ryan did say he does have the field reserved in Lexington just in case something falls through. So the game is seems back to be happening. Back to back. Play it in so. Nashville on the 7th. Lexington on the 8th. That's <laughs> it. Get out of here. All right, moving on. We're on to the PAFL. Let me get some water. Water sucks. All right, really, so really fire. Sucks. The fire. Put them up there with the Crusaders. They got a win for the forfeit. They went out and actually played a game, beat the Butler County Bulldogs, or Butler County Broncos. Sorry, stuck on the GDFL. Fire. Uh, both teams actually got a forfeit win, so that's not going to going to have a nice The Broncos on got a forfeit record. win, too? Broncos, okay. yeah, they're supposed to play the Tornadoes. Gotcha. Um, Fire won fairly easily from the final score. It's 31-17. Broncos put up 17. Most allowed all season by the Fire. I don't know if one team took it serious, more serious than the other because it really wasn't. Yeah, it's a T1, uh, T2 battle, right? Yeah, it didn't really have any playoff implications. But, uh, hey, it, it tells me a little something. Broncos don't give have up a little on the Broncos. Heart, yeah. They're, they're yeah. there. I, I, I couldn't. They're mad I didn't have them higher in the, the overall national rankings, which let me back that up. I just realized something. Beep, the GDFL beep, beep. calls their champion the national champion. <laughs> But it's only the 20 something teams in that area. It's only a regional champion. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. My wife said, get my facts straight. I'm trying. All right. Uh, just kind of run through some of the scores. The Raiders, the Ohio Raiders, beat the Northeast Ohio Silverback 17 0. The Raiders had a nice little squeak out win versus the Predators, 1 7 6. And, uh, you know, build on that nicely with a blowout win or a shutout win against the Silverbacks. Silverbacks are kind of starting to surprise me, like because we we kind of hyped them up to begin the year. Well, they, like, and well, then, I want to touch on that in yeah. tier two. Okay, they've been a bit of a roller coaster for me. Uh, the I forget they're a tier two. Yeah, team, the Pittsburgh Rangers two. continue to let me down. They have they're struggling. They lost forty one to six to the Spartans, Sherbane Spartans. They they last I heard they need a even before the deadline they needed a quarterback they needed a punter two things you don't really need this late in the season they, and it shows they took a loss Lorain County Nightmare picked up their second win of the season versus the Cleveland Patriots they have yet to get a tier one team win but they picked on the city, the team of the city of Cleveland they hey. beat the Patriots they beat the Rams everybody else does why not them. Exactly. Uh, now, I got some questions about Lorraine. They won 20-7. to 7. I heard Lorraine County has one of the top quarterbacks in Tier 1. Probably behind Fire and Wildcats quarterback. You think if you got that good of a quarterback, why do they not have more wins? Is he new? Does everyone else around them struggle? If you got some answers over there, let me know on, on the LCN because I've heard good things about his quarterback. I think he's number 10. I but I need a, sure. a, a strong quarterback. A semi-pro. I've always put that to you're going to get wins. Yeah, but you can have the strong. <clears throat> you can have an NFL style yeah, quarterback if, if you don't have a line. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, you need 
you need three seconds. Shocker right here. Southern Michigan Timberwolves. Thought they were a good team. Held them high. We thought we so. Got beat pretty badly by tier two Michigan Hurricanes. We'll talk more on them. Hurricanes are a solid team, though. They are. They are. But I just thought the SMT had more. I thought they were going to be able to pull this one off. I thought they would actually, I actually predict they would win pretty easily. Mm -hmm. They did not. Moving on. Take this The out. Detroit Seminoles hosted their rival of T2, the Highland Park Polar Bears. It was close. 14-12 win. Snuck it out. Seminoles, I don't, I don't see the Seminoles having a, a, a great offense. Seemed pretty solid on defense. But they, much like the Dukes, as we was talking, they're in there winning 14 nothing, 17 nothing, 17 14. So uh, I needed to see more from their offense. Yeah, but that, at the same time, this this shows you that they're finding ways to win. Hey, yeah, yeah. That, that will go a long way in the playoffs. Unfortunately, they're just in there just with the win, fire. Baby win. They're in the fire. They're in there with the fire. Yep. It, it's not going to be <clears throat> much of a hope for them. WPA Wildcats, another team that I heard a lot about over the last couple of years. A lot of hype. Heard they got a really good quarterback. They're winning. Their only loss came on a very controversial win or a controversial loss. Which was a light game? A light, yeah. I think the lights went out and they didn't feel like making the travel back. Like 30 seconds. Uh, after they won 13 goal. nothing against the Cleveland Rams. Cleveland Rams are a good tier two team. But I still I, I expect this, I want to see that Wildcats team winning by bigger, winning by more. Northeast Ohio Predators. Came off their first loss. They're the team that beat the Wildcats. They were undefeated. Came off a close loss to the Ohio Raiders. Lost by one point. They got back. Won a 32-0 game over the Pittsburgh Saints. Kind of looking at how the playoffs are going to break down. I I've yet to hear how the new playoffs will adjust. Last I heard, there were nine teams, and all nine teams were going to make the playoffs. You're going to have five teams in one division and five, four teams in the other, and they were just going to play. Yeah. Well, now the Tornadoes have folded. So now you still have five teams in this one division, and you only have three in this other. Are you going to keep that as is, or are you just going to go top eight? I'm going to pretend you're going top eight, and the way the playoffs would look now, you would have the fire at the first seed taking on, and I know that the season's not tallied out. I'm kind of basing this on how I think things will go because there's a lot of locks. There's a lot of three and ones locked in there together. You have the fire as the first seed taking on the Rangers as the eighth seed. Easy win for the fire. You would have, let's see, who, who do I have as the two seed? You would have the Predators as the two seed, taking on the Nightmare as the seven seed. You don't have the, uh, you don't have the Seminoles as second seed? The what? You don't have the well, Seminoles? Well, as of right now, they, the Seminoles are below them, I think, with less wins, if I'm not mistaken. Now, I'm just going off standings. The things oh, I okay. put out are rankings and who I think's better. I'm going off the standings if the playoffs were to start today. Okay, okay. How they appear. If, if this is how we follow play. you now. We follow you. If, if that's how things work. Uh, WPA would be the three seed. They would be taking on SMT at six. And then you would have Raiders at four and Seminoles at five. Like I said, that's just how the standings look. I tell you all the time, there's a difference between standings and rankings. Well, standings yeah. says teams A beat team B, so they're here. If you want standings, thepafl.com will keep you right. If you want rankings, or my opinion anyway, that's where I come in. That's what I'm throwing at you. <coughs> Jermaine Campbell does the same thing. I'm going to start sharing those two, see if he gets all the hate. <laughs> all right, where are we at? Moving on, next week. Well, let me uh, jump into some, some, some of the comments here. What we got? They said the Rams had a running clock and no scoreboard the whole game, so... Did they really how win? How do you get a running clock the whole? Well, the Rams <laughs> lost thirteen to nothing. Well, I'm saying like. But how do you get a running clock? Don't know the whole That's, game. Were you that? Did you travel that light? They said the refs just allow it to happen. But, well, but blame it on the look, refs. The leagues need to spot. <laughs> the leagues need to provide the ref. When I was in the ML, MLFA, the you paid them, but yep. the league said, "Hey, here's the refs. Let's make it happen." Which, uh, <clears throat> looking back on it, I believe. The Bulldogs and Rockets, they had a controversy when they played. Yeah, they brought, they, brought their and, own refs. Yeah, they brought their so, own hey, refs. Go so, hey, go back. We're, we're, sneak, we're climbing back to the GFL. Yeah, sorry. Moving Scott, forward. Moving forward. Scott, are you going to take your ref down to Rock Huntsville? I don't know if Scott Wallace is in, but uh, if he's watching, if sure. he's peeping, are you, taking I saw your, in there. are you taking your Nashville refs or your Tennessee refs to Huntsville? Let me know. They did it to you. All right, moving on. Next week, Wildcats, they're going to get an easy win because they play the Kings. It'll be a forfeit. Seminoles get a forfeit win. Rangers get a forfeit win. The Tri-County Crusaders travel to the Southern Michigan Timberwolves. I think the, Timberwolves, the, the Crusaders are more of a mid-Tier 2 team. 
The Timberwolves are going to bounce back. I think they're going to win 33 to nothing. I think this is how they get everything clicking again. Arguably, the pure T1 game of the week would be the Northeast Ohio Predators taking on the Lorraine County Nightmare. Um, I think the Predators are quite a bit better than the Nightmare. Unless, like I said, unless we can find something out about who this quarterback is. I've heard some things about him on and off. If he's worth something, if he's actually the truth, and he can get that team to gel around him, this could be a close game. As it is, I have the Preds winning 28-6. to We have the Summit County Storm coming off a little bad loss, taking on the Ohio Raiders. The Raiders are still looking to build on uh, what they got going with their win against the Predators, their win against the Silverback. I think they win 14-6. to The overall PAFL game of the week that I call, if we're including everything, the one that would excite me the most. Would it be the national game of the week? No, that's still Bulldogs. <laughs> that's still Bulldogs. Would be the Columbus Fire at the Dayton Hornets. Oh. Columbus Fire, number one team in the country, uh, or number two team in, in my country mm -hmm. that I have, in Mattopia. Uh, number one team in the PAFL, taking on a team, the Dayton Hornets. What can what can that receiver do? That NFL receiver they got, what can he do against the Fire? I like the Hornets. The Fire's got such a good defense. We'll yeah. talk on the Horn a little bit more when we get into PA, the Tier 2. But what can the Fire do? Are the Fire going to keep chugging? Are they going to keep on winning? Spoiler alert, I think they do. I think they win 30 to 20. They're, not gonna, they're probably yeah. not going to be thrilled that I get them giving up 20 points. But I'll talk more on the Hornets when I get to Tier 2. But Fire, I still got you winning. All right, moving on. Speaking of which, Tier 2. We're going to recap. We're going to rehash what happened last week. Columbus War Eagles beat the Ohio Valley Saints 48 to nothing, I believe, was the final score. Continuing their strong Tier 2 season, which I predicted... I was on board for. Everybody said, don't trust the War Eagles. I trusted them, and they're not letting me down. Keep it up. Yes. <laughs> you disagreeing, or did something come through? I agree. All right, well, there 100%. you go. Keep agreeing with me. The Crush got a forfeit win. Butler County Broncos got the win against Indy. They did lose to the Fire. Like I said, I think it's very admirable. They played that game. They could have set back. They could have gave the guys a, the weekend off. They could have drank some cold ones and got a win. They said, no, we want to prepare. We want to prepare for the Chiefs. We want to prepare for the Hornets. We want to prepare for the Canes. How do you do that? You play a team better than all three of those in the Columbus Fire. Yep. You hang in there. 31-17, to 17, Admiral. I count it. <coughs> Already said the Silverback lost 0-17 to 17 to the Ohio Raiders. You brought it up. They're a roller coaster. I came in, said, yay, Silverbacks. They yep. let me down, lost their first two. Looking back, seeing how things folded, they, got, they corrected the ship. Mm -hmm. They started winning some games. I was back on board. They lost. I'm not going to take anything away from them because I do think the Ohio Raiders are legit. Yeah, they I are. Think they are. I think the Silverback are a good team, but I think the Ohio, the Ohio Raiders are better. I'm not going to tell you anything from this them. This is kind of my view on the Silverbacks right now. They are the Dukes of the PFL. They will beat the teams that they are supposed to beat, I guess, mm -hmm. and they'll lose against the teams that – I, I, it, like if it's, I mean, I think they'd be better be close, than the actual but, Dukes, but I, well, the, the yeah, metaphor I just, you're setting, I, yeah, I, will, yeah, yeah. I will allow that. <laughs> Stop blaming the refs. Just win, baby, win. Who's blaming the refs? Everybody's blaming the refs. Always the refs' fault. <laughs> well, hey, let me let me go on what I've, what I've been saying when I was a player, when I was a coach, and, and now that I'm doing this on Semi-Pro. You have to take care of business because you know as an organization you cannot rely on the refs. You know that going into any game, these refs could look the other way. They can swallow the whistle. They can do whatever. If you put it on the refs, just like with travel, I'm putting that on you because you allowed that to happen. You you know you've been in semi-pro enough. You should never have the refs. <laughs> exactly. Dick, take the game. I just, I yes, most of yeah, these people yeah, who watch this have been in semi-pro years. Mm -hmm. You know the refs get shady. You know they only call certain things, violent hits. And the occasional holding, you, you don't, you don't get the the ticky tack ones no. that the NFL gives you. I barely see pass interference. I, you barely see roughing the passer, unless it's obvious. Unless it's obvious, yeah. They're not going to give you the benefit of the doubt that they give Tom Brady. You got to know that going into the game. Threw me off my game. Where am I at? Pit Bulls got a forfeit win. Uh, they also did play the Marion County Crusaders. I touched on it. It was a great game. Admiral for them hosting. I got a lot of faith in them. I really like them in Tier 2. 
I just they, they just wasn't their night. They seem to have a good offense. They seem to have a strong organization. Like I previously stated, I can't remember the quarterback's name, but I like him. The Ohio Gladiators, one of the worst teams in the Tier 2. They got a forfeit win. Strabane Spartans spoke on them earlier. They got a 46 to win against the Pittsburgh Rangers. That team, I like. They are fire. They're like the Airborne. They're like the Airborne of the PAFL. <laughs> You can never say too much good things about them, and God forbid the moment you say something bad about them, they're blowing up the page. Oh. If we ever get rich off this, it's going to be off the Airborne and off the Shermaine Spartans and Billy Cole and whatever <laughs> he's doing with whoever. But the Spartans, they always went more. I said they were going to lose six games at the beginning of the season. Oh, they had a hernia. I had them in the mid T2 rankings. There they come. And I didn't have them in the national rankings, and here they are. Look, the reason you're not in the national rankings is you haven't beat nobody. Nobody. You took a forfeit loss. I'm not giving you credit because your refs got caught somewhere else. So you got a loss. It stands. Do better. And you want to prove me wrong, on July 14th, you have WPA, Wildcats. Get a win. You have open dates on the 7th and the 21st. You tell me you're playing somebody. You're telling me you're working some kind of magic, but yet you don't want me to be in an ill-informed, but you're not telling me who you're playing, so I'm not going to count you playing anybody. So play somebody. <laughs> play somebody. Just anybody. Stop playing the legend. Well, the legends are in their division, so they got to play what's on their schedule. But you get an opportunity. Don't be one of these teams that just sits back and sips on your Limerita during a forfeit <laughs> win. Play somebody. Make it happen. Get some respect that way. Even if it's not for my quote unquote national rankings, somebody's watching. You got to get some big wins. You want to be to Florida, which is apparently where everybody wants to go. But I like them. I like them. They got they got spunk. I think they're a solid team. They're going to get better. I probably they'll probably win out. To be honest, I, I forgot. Except they, at uh, least in tier two. They're saying that they filled them with Pit Storm and the Rough Riders. You went tier three. The pit storm? That's coming from Dick Moore. I, Not even the West Virginia storm? Come on. And uh, uh, Moore, what? like, are you associated like with the team? Or he, he, I think he is. Okay. I like I like him too. He yeah. he, he interacts. He gives mm -hmm. me some information. So keep it up. But come on. Come on. Come man. on. <laughs> Go to the GDFL. They, they, actually, one of their represent, one of their owners, coaches, somebody in their organization, told me they didn't want to travel far. I get it. Yeah, I mean, but, but if you want to be top of the nationals, I gotta know you can travel. Run out on. And Mr. Moore is the owner, uh, so is he? Okay, yeah, I, I, I knew. It. I thought yeah. he was a part mm -hmm. of it. I know. And thank you, thank Mr. Moore. I thank you because you you do you, know, you feed me some information. You let me know what I need to know. So keep that up. But play somebody. I like your team. Play somebody. Hornets beat the Rage 36 to nothing. I like the Hornets. I like them too. Oh, they just got that, solid, uh, yeah. you know, they're a good organization. They're new. I know they picked from old organizations, but they look good on the field. There's mm -hmm. something about that black and that green. Yeah. Their logo's legit. They got an NFL player. They got, they got, they just got, I just like them. They're just Some, fun to root for. Something's like bringing the, me in. I like the Canton Pitbulls. Yeah. I just like rooting for them. They got a 36 nothing win over the Ohio Rage. The Ohio Rage, you changed your logo. You went from the Red Hawk to just face. Still ain't winning no games. <laughs> Highland Park Polar Bears, you impressed me a little bit. You you played, the, I think you actually hosted the Seminoles, and you got a, you lost by two. Better than I thought you was going to do. I thought it was going to be pretty ugly. It wasn't. Cleveland Patriots, you lost 6-20 to 20 to the Nightmare. All I've heard, it's a rebuilding season. I'm for that. I can dig that. I would rather you rebuild and struggle than fold and start over. I would rather the Cleveland Patriots struggle this year and come back next year, Cleveland Patriots winning games, than all of a sudden just become the Cleveland Steamers. I don't know. <laughs> I, like I like to uh, point out Jesse Peters in the chats. He says, Preds are winning the championship this year. Yeah, just whatever. Ju they just might, they might. I don't know. <laughs> but don't, don't count on the lights going out in the championship game. Uh, where was I? Canes. <laughs> Michigan Hurricanes. My upset. 23-7 over the, the Timberwolves. Hey, OG. Dude, played. I, I played with him on the Bucks. He gets on to me every week. This man calls me more than telemarketers. 
He wants me to give him respect. I gotta start giving him respect. Which I don't know. I mean, I gotta. I guess what's the level of respect? I don't think you're beating Canton. But I give you respect. You they're, went out there. You, you, they're video, solid. They, they are a solid team. Championship Their contender. Their uniforms are hideous, though. Not Why bad, do you have the state of Michigan? That's just hideous. It's too much going on. Yeah. But I, they, they, I don't know. You look good. You play good. But they're playing good anyway. I mean, they look horrible. The Rams. Rams are a solid team. I got them doing some things. I got them at least making the playoffs or doing some things. They did lose 13 to nothing to WPA Wildcats. They are in the comments here saying that the championship goes through Cleveland. So, uh, is that where the Predators are? Cleveland? The Rams. Well, they're in different tiers. Well, yeah, but th that's Okay, that's, so that's, the that's Rams. So saying. now you say the tri Now yeah. get out of there with that. <laughs> but one of those NEO teams are from, I want to say, Cleveland. I, 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 I don't know. know. They'll let me know. I'm sure I'll, yeah, I'll go we'll home look. and read all these comments. I'm sure there'll be 500 of them. Uh, this one shocked me. Didn't know much about these two teams. The Tri-County Crusaders and the Summit County Storm played. I thought Storm was substantially better. I thought Storm was a top-10 team. Tri-County Crusaders beat them 26-12. Subset of the week and pure Tier 2 games. I don't know what happened. I want to know. If you know something, let me know. Is the OG you're referring to as Chuck? Huh? Is the OG you're referring to as Chuck from the Hurricanes? His name's Oliver Gann or something. Okay, never mind. If he's in our talk, I don't know. Yeah. So, what happened to the Storm? I liked you guys. Said y'all was top 10. Said something could happen. Had the Crusaders back, way back, way, way in the back. They came up here. They said, nah, not so fast, my friend. They got to win. Iron City Legends, Westmoreland Wolves. Close game, 14-6. I thought the Wolves, a lot, I've heard a lot of good things from the Wolves. They've lost two in a row. This one was close. I heard there was some controversy. I don't know what. I want to know. Uh, Pitty Saint, the the Pit Saints, we established they lost a, a big one in Tier 1. I'm kind of looking at the playoffs, what I think could appear. Yeah, we are talking playoffs because we're getting close. We're getting down to the stretch. <coughs> the way it looks, just kind of going through some things, I see that uh, the War Eagles are the first in the Stripes West division. I, I imagine as of right now, they would be a one or two seed. Uh, the Butler County Broncos are first in the Stripes East. I have them about a four seed. Silverbacks are a fifth seed on the other side. As it stands right now, they're behind Canton. I don't think they're catching them. I just want to say watch out for them in the playoffs. Like, if you let them in, like... Well, I, I think they're going to yeah. be in because there's such a drop at the bottom half of the playoffs yeah. on that side. Uh, the Pit Bulls are the number one seed on the star side. Uh, the Kings folded. The Gladiators, they're not playoff bound. Uh, Speaking of folding teams, fold watch the Wolves, the Timberwolves. They said they the lost. Southern Michigan Timberwolves? Yeah, I I believe so. They're they're saying the Wolves, so I, I'm assuming. The well, there's there's the Southern, then there's the Westmoreland Wolves that I was just talking about. Uh, yeah. So, so if you could clarify. You could, yeah, if you guys could clarify, they, they said the Wolves. They said they lost their quarterback, which was their OC as well. So, I mean, you lose that your quarterback sounds like, and your that OC. That sounds like something to be more Westmoreland Wolves yeah. because the, the SMT yeah. has just it, been through so much more. It is the Westmoreland I don't Wolves. see just one quarterback calling it a rip. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. RIP if they fold because that's, yeah. that's a hard hit, especially when you're a team built around a quarterback. We talked about it with the uh, Spartans earlier with Evan. Mm -hmm. it, it's tough. Just Let's look they pull through. Uh, right now, I, I see that um, – the Spartans are, are winning. The Shrebain Spartans are leading the Star South. I got them as a two seed. Hornets, only because they they share a division with the Chiefs. And I don't know how that's going to break down. I don't know how they're going to yeah. do the tiebreakers. But I would have them as the fifth seed. Uh, Highland Park Polar Bears, I, they'd be about the sixth seed. I think they're going to fluctuate somebody in there. The Cleveland Patriots, they're not going to make the playoffs. Haven't won any games yet. Uh, the Canes, uh, they're that, that's going to be fighting that War Eagles for that one or two seed. Yeah. Now, if they take a loss, now they're falling back and letting the Chiefs come back up there in that one or two seed. <clears throat> but it's going to be interesting to see how that ends. You got the War Eagles, you got the Chiefs, you got the Hornets, you got the Canes. They're all kind of fighting for that one, two seed. They want they want the championship to go through their city, which I like that. I mean, like like I think the we're I top. think we're going to see a really good end. That's why I, I'm going to reach out, PAFL guys, owners, reach out to me. Because we're getting to the good time. When I, when I talk playoff games, I want to know everything. I want to talk like I'm talking about the NFL. 
So if you got your star player, send me your top players. Send me your key guys. Send me breakdowns of games. Because when we talk about it, I want to share that. I want to get that out there. I want to know if something truly happened. Westmoreland Wolves, they lost two in a row. They lost their quarterback. That's the kind of things you got to know. Because that's a big difference maker going forward. And uh, just to pile just to pile on that while you drink that water sucks. I was dying. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you guys can send us a message and, and like we can have you on the show. We can have you call in. We, can, we can do a video chat. I don't know about having them on the show. We've seen how that goes. Yeah, but... They I get a little I feel, chatty. I feel these guys are my show. These guys are more more professional. Yeah, we'll let them know. <laughs> All right, where was I? Rams. I don't think you're winning that. Yeah, you might win a division. I got them at a three seed right now. First round loss. Uh, cru the the Crusaders. I got them at a seventh seed. I think they're winning enough games that playoff at the bottom starts to get a little flaky. I think they're making it. Summit County Storm. They're on the star side, if I'm not mistaken. They're. I think they're a bottom tier playoff team. Right now, they're looking at that 7th or 8th. You can't be losing games like you're doing if you want to make the playoffs. Uh, the Legends, right now, if I'm not mistaken, I believe they're leading the Stars East. They're a 4 seed. They're that last of that. Wolves are a 6 seed. You're still in the playoffs. Don't give up just because you get an injury. I get it. It's bad. Uh, the Saints look like they're about a 6 seed. Like I said, these aren't identical. During the 4th of July break, I'm going to do another breakdown of what I think the playoffs will look like in the results. <laughs> but off the top of my mind, this is just kind of what I'm looking at here. Uh, just a question from the comments. Do you know what the actual structure of the playoffs is, like, for the Tier 2? For Tier 2, I think I've been told it's 16 teams. So probably a winner from each division and then the bottom four, much like the NBA does. But I don't think they have four divisions. But I think your, your, I think your top four seeds will probably go to division winners. Okay. And then your bottom four will be just filled with the rest. So then eight on I, eight. I would imagine. Eight yeah. on eight on each, yeah. each side. I mean, now, maybe they might just do a pure eight. Yeah. But I, if you're going to have divisions, I think you've got to award a division winner. Yeah. I mean, there's no sense of having a division and playing division games if it doesn't right, right. Yeah. Why, why just do that? Why don't just play willy-nilly and then just your top eight go against each other? Yeah. All right. Let's go into next week. We got the Shrebane Spartans taking on the Pitt Saints. Spartans are hungry. They tell me they don't. They, they tell me they don't <laughs> care about the rankings, but they spend a lot of time talking about the rankings. I think they're trying to prove me something. Prove me something. I got them winning over the Saints, thirty-four to fourteen. Prove me right. The Ohio Rage take on the Ohio Valley Saints. Both the eh. Ohio Valley's kind of slipping a little bit in my eyes. The Rage, eh, they're just not good. I got the uh, Saints winning fourteen nothing. Pit okay. Bulls, you get another forfeit win. Do you do you pick up somebody else? Y'all can take a break. That last that physical game last year, week against uh, the you Crusaders, definitely you earned it. One. One. But if you want to sit back and get another forfeit win, or you want to try for two, play the Shrebane Spartans. I want to see it. Actually, I don't think the Spartans obviously <laughs> got a game. Actually, Shrebane, just cancel the Pit game. Go play Pit Bulls. Crusaders at the Timberwolves. I already called it. It's 33 nothing. Crusaders, you, you, you gave me an upset. You gave me hope. You beat the storm. I don't see it happening again. Stumble. Yeah, yeah you, you just stumble. Because that team's just yeah. a good organization. Even though they, this might be a down year by their standards, they're just such a good organization. Summit County Storm taking on the Raiders. Summit County, you, you're going to want to be back. But luckily, this don't count against your playoffs because you're not going to win. Like I said, you're losing 14-6. to six. Silverbacks versus Wolves. Now, I'll be honest with you. I'll be Candid up front. I had Wolves bouncing back and winning 20 to 12, mainly because the Silverbacks have kind of let me down in some big games early on. But new developments, you don't have a quarterback, you're on fold watch, you're struggling to put up points. I'm flipping it. <clears throat> Silverback 20, Wolves 12. Let's and flip it here. Just to clarify, they did they didn't only lose a quarterback, they lost their O their like their OC as well. But it's so, right. So But I mean it's the same guy, right? Well, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, but. I, I imagine just in talking, most people that have a legitimate football smart quarterback, the OC is just a, a branch of him. Yeah. Like, He's, like Evan uh, uh, Spartan. You know, I, I talk about them because I, I know them. I, I got a buddy that plays for them, and they are local. I would love to ha have this same knowledge for the PAFL team. But him and his OC are one. The OC gives him, like, five plays, and he picks. So... It, it's it's kind of assumed, at least by my part, when you have a legitimate quarterback, when you have a high football IQ quarterback, he probably has a huge hand in the play calling. 
All right, Gladiators versus the War Eagles. The Glad's are at the bottom. War Eagles at the top. Go War Eagles. Keep proving me right. 36-6 to six win. Calling it here. Hornets fire. Called that earlier. Said it's going to be a 30-20 to 20 win. Hornets, you can do this. You got it. Sound like you got a decent quarterback. Got a good receiving core. Got a strong defense. Got the Jalen kid at the from the Jets. I, I believe he's still there. Haven't heard much about him. Which kind of goes to show. On a side note, the guys who talk the most are usually not the best. Oh. You got a kid who played yeah. in the NFL, played at the Ohio State, which I'm not a fan of, but that's how they say it. <laughs> and I ain't heard the kid say nothing. And heard him post. He doesn't talk. Maybe on Facebook. I don't know. Yeah. But he, he's not, he's not a big talker. He because he if anybody could That's say the professionalism, man. if anybody could say look at what I do, mm -hmm. it could be him. Oh yeah. But he does. That I don't, just shows I, you the level of professionalism. I think that he does get, if he plays. I think he does get two touchdowns against the fire. I don't think it'll be enough. Like I said, thirty to twenty. Is it at fire or at Hornets? It's at the Hornets. Ooh. That's why I got him good getting yeah, twenty. Okay. If it's at the fire, I would have it more like thirty six to mm -hmm. eight. I got you. But I, I think home field does mean a little something sometimes. Yeah. Even though I don't think Columbus and Dayton is that far from each other. I don't know. Canes at the Patriots. Like I said, the Canes, I got to give them your respect. I give you your love, whatever you want. Patriots, you're rebuilding. Canes win big 50-6, to six, I'm saying. Maybe not even that. I don't know if the, pa the Patriots may struggle to put up points. I don't know. I don't know either. Highland Park <laughs> Polar Bears, Rams. This is my tier two, my pure tier two game of the week. Games include both tiers. Polar Bears versus the Rams. I, I, I just like the Rams better than the Bears. Don't know enough about these teams. This is the information I want to feel. But just from what I've seen historically, Rams 22, Polar Bears 14. Broncos at the Chiefs. I'm going to skip that one. I'm going to come back to that one. Oh, Legends. they were calling for that game, too. They they, they said pick it. I got it. Give it's the coming. people what they want. It's coming. <laughs> and actually, you can't see this, but this was Destin. I didn't even put a score down. I I, I forgot. The, the game, I was typing this up, and I, it just weighed on me so much. I got I to gotta wait. And just jumping jumping back to the Fire Hornet game, they said it's only about a 45-minute drive. Okay, so, so the travel yeah. won't really put much in. I mean – and semi-pro, even if you get a good, solid fan base, it doesn't make that much of a difference. It's not It's not like you go to the big house in Michigan and that place is rocking. Oh, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> the only the only thing that I, I feel the home field advantage is just to travel in general. Yeah, because, yeah. Because you have those teams yeah. that only bring 18. And, yeah, so. ex exactly. And don't use that as an excuse. Um, Steam versus the Crush. I think the Steam gave a forfeit win to the Chiefs last week. I don't know what's going to happen. Crush is that mid-tier team. Steam, kind of the bottom. I got the Crush winning 26-6. to six. All right, back to the well, – how did I even call that? I read that earlier. I'm going to take it away. Highland Park, Polar Bear, you're not the game of the week. Broncos, Chief, that's the game of the week. I don't know how I oversaw it. It must have been sidetracked or something. New guy. Yeah, I'm blaming, I'm blaming <laughs> on the intern. Intern, scrub. Broncos at Chiefs. Now – I look at what the Chiefs did the first time around, and I say, okay, that's I'm going to give that to the Chiefs. I'm going to give a point to the Chiefs. Then I see the Broncos came in there against the fire and did a little something. So I'm going to put that over here. And then I see that the Chiefs, I don't know what happened. Did they let their guard down? Did the ball just not bounce their way? Because they, they beat the Hornets pretty handily, and then they came back and the Hornets beat them the second time. It is at Cincinnati this time, but I think Butler County is not far from there either. I believe last week they said well, last week they said it's fairly it, close. It, well, it, it is a it's like the East End. Right. Like, okay. Yeah. So yeah, mm -hmm. man, the Broncos got probably, in my opinion, the best uniforms in semi-pro this area. Very solid. That blue and that Oregon chrome, man. And then they saw a picture of like a, a Bronco guy holding a Columbus Fire guy, and he had like a sleeve that said hogs on it. Yeah. I mean, just little things like that just kind of take it that extra mile. And if the Chiefs break out there all red, that was just that was just visually amazing. But I am going Chiefs. I think it is a little closer. I got Chiefs. Uh, let's go 34, Broncos 26. I don't know. I mean, it's. I, I like yeah. uh, Davis, the, the quarterback. I, I like him. I like the receivers. They got 
they got one guy, he, he Dre Reap, I think is the least Facebook name. I don't know what his real name is. Mm-hmm. He's a playmaker. I like Bronco. The Broncos have a solid quarterback. But I just, the Chiefs, they lost the one game. They lost the, the complacency. You know, I, I think they went to the Hornets. They said, hey, you've already, we've already beat you once. This is nothing. We're going to win this easily. And they got upset. So I, I don't see it happening again. Just by judging by the comments, the Chiefs just don't travel well from kind of what um, but isn't it, I'm gathering. Well, then I'm, let I'm me gathering. know how far it is. Yeah. Because if it's example, like me traveling across the city, I can't buy into that. If the Chiefs, if they're saying that the Chiefs lost to Dayton Hornets by traveling, then I, I get that, and then I'm, and I, that, that kind of echoes my saying here that they're going to win. So I don't know. I mean, Broncos could prove me wrong. And just to uh, jump back to that Steam game, they said the Steam had uh, field issues, so that's why the game didn't happen. All right. Well, then you got to get your field straightened out. That's all I'm saying. I mean, if you want to be taken serious, I know fields are hard to find. I know refs are hard to find. And I'm not saying that you should shut down shop, but if you if, if we're talking about you up here, there's three tiers. There's three tiers. There, there's the penthouse, there's the main floor, and then there's the basement. The teams in the basement, if you strive to be a basement team, you got to close up shop. And I'm not going to mention any names, but there's some good teams that are basement teams. You're good because you don't push yourself. You're good because you want to play in practice jerseys. You're good because you want to play at a park. You're good because you play a league with three, uh, three teams. You're in the basement and you should fold. You should stick to flag. Yeah. Then you got your your your, your middle class, your common tier teams. Those are teams that I think are developing, and you should consider yourself such. You don't want to over you don't want to over stress yourself, and, and and you're just there in the middle. But then you got your penthouse team. Those teams are in the top. They they are they are top floor. They they carry themselves like they're a small college. They recruit like they're a college. They play on they some of them actually play on a college field, mm-hmm. which brings me out. Uh, what leagues is the Toledo Thunder in? I want to cover them. Toledo they used to play at Toledo University. That's nice. But you play at at top notch universities, and just like the Canton Pit Bulls did, just like the Butler County Broncos <laughs> did, just like the Marion County Crusaders did, when you get hey hey here's a forfeit win enjoy no no that's not for me I'm yep. penthouse team I'm upper class I'm ready for this who's who wants this and, that's the teams that I want and those are the teams that I want to play for that's the players teams that I like to cover yep. that's the teams I'm here for the players that I'm gonna do my job. And if I get picked up, I get picked up, and that's great. All right, that that includes it to T2. Moving on to T3, let's recap. Lima Warriors. They're strong. They're there. They're dominating. 166 over the Marion Titans. Man, shut it down. It's easy. Pitt East Storm taking on the Tri-County Phoenix. Pitt wins 30-13. to That's another one I'm telling you about. I had a little in-source. had a little source tell me. That the storm, I don't know where Pitt East is. I don't know how close that is from West Virginia. Like I said, I didn't go to geography. Not Google Maps. They did say that they... They must have gotten some from the Ironmen. I saw saw that in the chat earlier. And it's showing. Yeah, they're definitely... They're winning. 30-13. to Pitt, Phoenix. If I'm not mistaken, I believe you got a pretty lopsided win against the storm not too long ago. What happened? West Virginia Storm, my man Billy Cole took on my man Michael Payne in the River City Hurricane or the River City Buccaneers. I like the Buccaneers. They play at a really nice stadium. They want to. They're they're one of those they're one of those cla- those people that are upper class. They're middle class, but they take really good of their stuff. Really good care of their stuff. You know they got they got the older truck, but man, it's polished. It looks nice. They're they're one of those teams. I, I want to root for them. I just don't think they have enough. And West Virginia showed them they didn't have enough. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think West Virginia was up 20-something to 3, maybe even 30 to 3. It's not enough. My Sabres, you got a nice little forfeit win against the Ironmen. But I want you to be upper. I want, I, I'm talking about you. I'm talk, I want you up here. Man, you want to talk uniforms? Some of the best. Oh, yeah. they're That helmet wow. with that uh, carbon fiber look, mm-hmm. man, that's, that's top notch. Play on a nice field, <laughs> top notch. You got to be top notch. You get it. You got a uh, spoiler alert. You got another. You got another week off. Is it a forfeit or is it a week off? You can't, we don't need two weeks off. Who needs two weeks off? You're gonna get old and cramped up. Nobody's coming to practice. Blaze, man, 
Blaze, I want to. I, I, I'm on this rant now. I got the soapbox out. Blaze, you're one of the top. I got you in the top 25, and you're getting forfeit win. I feel like you've only played three games. Yeah, it's like I feel like I never see finals. I feel like yeah. the Blaze, the Storm, and the the Sabers here of late, they're not just playing anybody. I haven't heard anything from the Rough Riders either. I know they. I give it to the Rough Riders. The Rough Riders are coming out to play the Shebang Spartans. They're trying to find their place. But the Blaze. I'm going to put you up there like the Sabres. I've heard high things about you. I hold you to a higher standard than I think you're holding yourself. Be upper echelons. Take that ride up to the penthouse. Just see that window view, man. Don't be all right with with corner view. Get that window view. Do you overlook think, the city. Do you think these teams are afraid to put that L on their, like on the name, if they're trying to make, they, it, to, make it to Florida? Some might be, or, you know, like, especially you know at, at some of these smaller tiers where where the the nationals aren't even looking at you but that like I said that's what I want to start yeah I want to look at that if I see a team seven and three I want to look at why you're seven and three yeah. a lot of where people a lot of people from? get on to me because I still have the Chattanooga Eagles in the top 25 with four losses look who those losses were to. Yeah, I mean, People are asking me, why is the Huntsville Rockets above the Columbus Fire when the Columbus Fire have won two straight seasons and a national championship? Look who the Rockets have beat. I mean, it's it, – it, what's the old saying? It, it's, a, uh, it's, a, it's a quality loss. Yes, yeah. you can have quality losses. Cavs had one. I'm, come on. Just, just blaze. Just play, play somebody. Stop taking all these forfeit wins. It's not good for nobody. And I, I guess there is a part about funding. You know, uh, yeah. a, a forfeit win means you don't have to pay. A lot of places, at least where mm -hmm. when when I was with the Bucks, where we used to play, you know, if you, the game didn't happen, you didn't have to pay for the field. You didn't have to pay the refs. So that's a thousand dollars that you pocket and get to save for a playoff run. I get it. But if you want to be up there, take a just go on a tour of the upper echelons. That can be you guys, the Blaze, Western Union Storm. Make it happen. That, which I will give props to the Storm. I believe Billy Coe was looking for potential replacements if this game this week didn't happen. Yeah, he said he uh, they were about to scuttle the Sabres. And ah, but it, yes. It, but they fell through. But they Cancel did. whoever you're playing, Billy Coe, and play the Sabres. I need to see that. They that will get me through. out of the city. They said it fell through. Nah, he's giving me excuses. But they did say they picked up the tanks. So. Ooh, okay, okay. That That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That's one reason I like to do the 25-2. And the Blaze said they wanted other. to play somebody quote quote good, but nobody stepped up. We'll find you somebody, Blaze. Let me know when you got another week off. So just kind of looking at the playoffs here too. Uh, from my understanding, I think you get eight teams of the. Uh, I believe there's probably eight remaining, maybe nine. Yeah, I think we're uh, top ten two right division there. winners, and then two runner ups, or two wild cards, I guess if you will. Kind of breaking down what that looks like. I got. It looks like Lima is going to be the third seed on. I want to say the stripes. Correct me on that, Billy. If yeah, that's, I believe it, the stars I think and stripes. Stars and stripes. Yeah. I think the stripes where uh, that whole division is going to have. I want to say the Blaze is a one seed. I would probably even venture to say the Storm is a two seed. Let me let me just double check here. Yeah, probably got the Storm as a two. The West Virginia Storm is a two seed. The Lima Warriors is a three seed just because they're already behind the blaze. Yeah. But Billy Cole has strong feelings that the, the Warriors are going to pull that off. They may. And then the River City Buccaneers will be that four seed. Then you would have over basically the easiest, the Stars is super simple. You have the, the Sabres clearing away number one. Yeah. It's looking like Pity Storm's probably going to be number two since they've added all this talent. And then you got the Phoenix and the Rough Riders at three and the four. Like all those are making the playoffs. Yeah, Iron Men are out. It's a wrap. So basically, you, your your championship, your conference championship games are going to look like Rough Riders versus Sabers. I put any money money on that, unless the Storm are much better than I think. But but then again, the Rough Riders beat the Iron Men. So moving on to what's going on this week. We got let, me, uh, let, me, let, me, let me jump in here. They, right. they uh, said the Rough Riders uh, got pit storm this week, and they picked up the Little Saints. I'm not for sure who the Little Saint, the Saints are. The Little Saints? The, it said Lit or Little. I'm not for sure. Maybe Pit, pit Saints? I, maybe. Uh -huh. And then they said they picked up the Westmoreland Wolves and the Surveying Spartans to get ready for the playoffs. So. Well, okay, so that, like I said, we, we had heard about the Spartans a little earlier mm -hmm. thanks to their owner. 
the Wolves thing doesn't mean anything if they're folding. Yeah. But if their quarterback can come back, I don't know what the injury is. If he can come back, then I'll give them props on that. Because the Rough Riders are one of those that's kind of been low-key the last couple weeks. Let me know anything else pops up on that. So just kind of looking, it looks like Llama Warriors get another forfeit. Once again, Llama, I know it's last minute, but couldn't you find somebody? The Phoenix, they, they're they going to get a forfeit win. They're a team that probably need the forfeit win just to try to get some kind of playoff seating. They're, they're kind of fumbling at the bottom. Uh, West Virginia Storm taking on the Stealth. That's the one that Billy Coe looks like that game wasn't going to happen. It actually ended up happening. I would rather see the West Virginia Storm versus the Pitt Sabres. Storm going to win 44 to nothing. Pitt East Storm taking on the Rough Riders. That could be something. Let's see what the Storm's going to be. This is going to tell me what they picked up from the Ironman. Yeah. They're in the same conference, so maybe travel won't be too bad. I think both teams come across. I think you got the Rough Riders maybe a little rusty. Had two weeks off, if I'm not mistaken. The Storm's still trying to gel. I got the Rough Riders winning 14-6. to six. Is that the last game? And that appears to be the last game. I thought there might have been one more. The, the Sabres are off again. Like I said, Sabres, I want to hold you up there in high standards. I keep telling you, I keep hearing about how you started 0-3 or something. You got blasted by 30, and then you just happen to turn around in Tier 3 play. I want to promote more of that, but we just can't be sitting around getting old and crusty. Yeah, because our buys are, they they need to work. Like a, a yeah. one buy is nice. Like a nice little buy week is nice. Oh, yeah. That's why, like, I tell a lot of teams, it's okay. It could be a little detrimental the way the leagues are set up. Because if you're a top tier team and you get too many buys, you, there's already like a week off for oh, preparation. You know, for the make they call it the makeup week, and then you go right into action. Mm -hmm. Then you got that week off for the playoffs, that bye week. So that's two weeks off. And unless you're a really strong organization and you're just stacked deep at practice, a lot of guys say, "Hey, I'm not coming this week." They don't say it, but they're, they've already decided they're not coming. So <clears throat> I think it, it could hurt a lot of teams. What's going on in the chat right now? Anything? Uh, just the Rough Riders are, are chiming in. Okay. You know, the, I haven't heard from you in a while. I like kind of see them. I, I they kinda... said they they are ready. Okay. Actually said. I'm always ready for it to be ready. ready, but, you know. Probably going to come out with something, a little uniform rankings. I, I like. That's what I like about the t the, the favorite league to cover. I'm just going to kind of go on a little, little thing here at the end. Uh, if I had to say my favorite leagues to cover is obviously PAFL's number one. Oh. Because every team in there is passionate. And they're and the easiest to cover. They're the easiest to follow. They are. They're the easiest to follow. And I thought Tier 3, I almost didn't cover Tier 2 and Tier 3. Tier 2 just seemed too much. Tier 3 just seemed too mediocre. But Tier 3, they got a lot of they got a lot of nice things out there. A lot of nice teams just competing. Um, I like covering the BCFL. I feel like, I feel like the BCFL is top-heavy with, with who they, you know, the top half care and the bottom half don't. The GDFL would be fun to cover. if I, I just don't feel like I reach those guys enough. I feel like once you get below Tennessee and above Florida, I don't I don't reach any of those people. And then the MSFA, I, I'm, you're losing me. There's not a website. Half the players half the players don't care about anything outside of their little city. And then even at that, if you're not covering them right, they don't want to talk about you. So instead of being like the Strabane Spartans yeah. or the Clarksville Airborne, hey, you're disrespecting us, quote unquote. I want to prove that wrong, and then they'll partake in some nice conversation. A lot of these teams, a lot of some of the MSFA teams, just like, yeah, done mean, with you. Mean like, if you approach us the right way, mean like we will inter interact with you like on the chat, like like just just like we are here, right? But like if you're just saying, oh, you hate us, you hate us, what? Is making you think that just because we aren't breaking you number one, exactly. like, uh, are, you, I, I you certainly know, agree. Yeah, just now, have have an intelligent conversation, and it will go a lot further in the way that you know we. Now, all this thought, I, I feel like the tier three. You know, I just want to look at some of the tier three teams. I'm on uniform watch right now. That just got me hyped. Like just <laughs> thinking about some of them, the Blaze. I don't like the Blaze. I feel like their jerseys are too plain. They're too baggy. Uh, they just look like a, they look like a team from the nineties. Yeah. Uh, the West Virginia Storm. I actually haven't seen them. No, I have. I take that back. You look like Washington. I haven't seen the helmet. They, like the Washington, uh, the, Washington Hus Redskins. the Washington Huskies, oh, Huskies. In, in Washington. They got the uh, they said there's blue 
and then they have like the two tone numbers okay, yeah. with the same Washington Husky font. Mm -hmm. uh, mine's out at Valley Sabers, probably the favorite. Like I said, they got they got their own uniform style. I haven't seen. Those. They got that carbon helmet with a legit. And if I'm not mistaken, I think their dude or somebody even paints the field, their logo on the field. Oh, nice. <laughs> and they have like a little helmet that you run out of. Gotta love that. So I root for you. Uh, River City Buccaneers. I hate them. They look like the Cleveland Browns. Yeah. That that poop brown or that <laughs> Cleveland Brown hel orange helmet. <laughs> Is the most hideous thing I've ever seen. Last year, they had this silver, like these chrome metallic silver helmets. Those were nice with the little pride stickers of little skeletons or scales, yeah. whatever, skulls. Those are nice. But this Cleveland brown look for the birds. Michael Payne, you're better than that. I'm just not lost for words. I'm moving on. Well, seek your lost for words here. Billy Cole is asking... What can they do to jump the Blaze in the rankings? Like, what would you have the Blaze lose or beat the Blaze? There you go. There you go, Billy Cole. Got the answer. Ryan Stark says uh, he's upset for you not coming back to another game and buying a hot dog. Okay. <laughs> they didn't take credit card. The drinks were hot. So I went and I got a Sprite because I had just broken my pinky. And I was just, it was, a, it was a hot day. I was just wanting to refresh. I was excited to watch the game. And when I got there, it was like six minutes in. It was already 21 to nothing. <coughs> or 20, yeah, 20, I think it was 21 to nothing. I just wanted a nice cold Sprite. They reach around. They get it out of the cooler. They reach around. They get it out of the cooler. I'm like, oh, bring that bad boy to me. It is hot. It's hot. room temperature. Is the cooler plugged in? Call the principal at Paul Orange Dunbar and ask... <laughs> What's he got to do to get electricity out there? And then I said, okay, this this would be all right if I get a burger. And then he said, they only take cash. And that's all I have. Is I just had enough of that hot Sprite. So You need to download that Square app, Ryan. Exactly. Yeah, get a little chip reader. Yeah, there you go. Okay, who was I talking about? Mon Valley Rough Riders. I like y'all's uniforms. It's a nice little mix. It looks like Middle Tennessee State got the, and Kentucky. They got like a... a, a I do like military scene states. So. Yeah, they got they got that kind of look. They got the checkered shoulder pads. Uh, I'm trying to. I think their helmets are blue. They're either blue or silver. I, they haven't played in so long. I don't remember. <laughs> uh, Lima Warriors. I like the helmet. I think y'all playing practice jerseys. Step your game up. Actually, the, because if I'm not mistaken, isn't the full logo on the front of the jersey? I don't know. See what they say. I don't know. Tri County Phoenix, never seen. Port Mount Stealth. I think they're black and gray. <laughs> Marion Titans, never seen. And Pitt East Storm, never seen. So the upper end is our nice uniforms. Uh, but it's getting late. Is there anything in the chat? Anything that we need to talk about? They said Rough Riders are the hottest team in Tier 3. Who right. said that? The Rough Riders? Of course they're going to say the Rough Riders. <laughs> I've told you. It's all right to like your baby. I just ain't trying to hold it. Well, uh, just to remind everybody that we will not have a show next week. Yeah, we July. will not. Enjoy your 4th of July. That is what we're referring to the off week. Uh, somebody commented in the chat saying that the that, like the games yeah. are still on next week, but well, we most, won't be here. Most games, most leagues have, or, or some of the leagues have time off. There will still be games. I will still put out as much content as possible. I'm probably going to put out some kind of, um, I'll still put out the rankings. The rankings will be on YouTube. It just kind of gives me practice at this. Check that out. Um, Monday, I'll probably drop the rankings. Tuesday, I'll probably put out some kind of, something kind of fun, something like the playoff bracket, revised for all the leagues. Maybe put out like a an overall, like just ranking of like, you know, uniforms, organization, maybe a midterm report card. <coughs> I know we're over halfway through the season, but just kind of what I think, you know, how I think you're doing. Just kind of trying to flood the content since there won't be a show. And then we'll, of course, of course, put out any kind of reviews and predictions of the next game. And just to uh, pile on, guys, just share the content. You know, help us help us spread the word so we can properly, properly inform ourselves and, you know, just help spread the word. Yeah. Um, anything else that you'd like to add? Uh, no, just... Make sure, guys, it's going to be hot this like this weekend. Yes. Start hydrating. Like, I mean, like I heard the Spartans and Titans game, they, they were cramping real bad two weeks ago, and it wasn't that hot. It's supposed to be heat index over 100, I think it was, like in this area. Like, at least hydrate. Water, pickle juice, pineapple juice, whatever you need. Like, we don't, we don't need anybody getting hurt. 
What are we sitting at with viewers still? Oh, uh, right now we're sitting about 25. So, not, so not I was seven. one thing I was thinking. I mean, if guys want to watch, I got content I'll talk about. I mean, it's just I don't want to keep guys, you know, longer than they're interested. Um, I was kind of looking at some of the the national rankings, and I said, you know, I, I don't know if the finances. Because I don't want to be one of those people that get. I'm not here, especially off the semi pro. I'm not here to make a profit off the off the semi pro teams. No, uh, I don't. I don't want to be like, hey, you know, this team gives me five hundred dollars. I'm really going to cover them more than the other teams. So, I, and I don't want to appear as if I'm like, because naturally, if I have a national championship type of, type of game. Oh, the funding's going to have to come from somewhere. I would love to get sponsors. I would love to get maybe Rydell, Dix, Sleeves. Uh, uh, who's the Oakley? Not Oakley. Shocks, Visor. Oh, you yeah. know, just some companies that semi-pro really, let's be honest. I mean, I, high school kids can't wear shock visors. NFL might, but I think they're more Oakley or I team. I think they have to have everything in NFL is Nike, Right, I believe. It has so, to be. Yeah. So, a Shock has to sell a lot through semi-pro. And and I think it would be cool if teams start if they started to get behind that. Um, but anyway, so I was just kind of looking at my rankings. If I had a BCS style, um, your I, I was thinking maybe some kind of bluegrass bowl, river MSFA versus Tier Three. If that were to be a thing, it would still probably be the Southern Ohio Blaze versus the River City Hurricane, maybe the West Virginia Storm versus the uh, Kentucky Spartans. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that would just be a good matchup to see. It's teams that. They're, they're good programs, and they're about evenly matched. Um, as of right now, if we took the top BCFL team, if they didn't play their way into a national championship, it'd be the Marion County Crusaders, and they'd play in the top Tier 2 teams. would probably be Canton Pitbulls, Cle uh, Cincinnati Chiefs, Dayton Hornets, Michigan Hurricanes, maybe in the West Portland Tanks. I'm not disappointed. Even though we just saw Crusaders, Pitbulls, they got I would want to see that again. Yeah, they got me I would hyped. love to see that again. Neutral site, maybe something. I, I don't know how close Canton is to here, but my, they might be neutral. Like if it was in Louisville, that might be a three-hour drive for both. Um, an, another bowl that I think will be interesting, having the top Tier 1 team that's not top one or two versus one of the top GDFL teams. You could have Middle Tennessee Bulldogs, the Erie Express, taking on the Detroit Seminoles, NEO Predators, WPA Wildcats, Ohio Raiders. However this breaks down, Top, to see some of those teams play against each other, I think would be good. And as of right now, the national championship game would be the Huntsville Rockets versus the Columbus Fire. And I, fire. Would, I would love to see exactly. that game. Oh, the Huntsville man. Rockets are the new kids on town. Yep. You know, they, they finally got the benefit from the Eagles being down, mm -hmm. the Thunder being down. They finally get their chance on stage versus the Columbus Fire, proven winners. They've been here. They've dominated. There's a guy for the Columbus Fire who just posts his championship rings, and he's got them for days. <laughs> I, I would love to see that matchup. You know, if you, or if you did more of a matchup where the numbers were more of a like closer related uh, league games, you could see Columbus Fire versus the Middle Tennessee Bulldogs. Something I think everybody would love to see. Uh, Marion County Crusaders versus the Erie Express. I think would be a great game. Maybe the travel wouldn't be too hideous for them. Uh, just some of these teams. I would love to see them play each other. And you're right. There's no reason to play if there's no schedule, if there's risk getting hurt. Yeah. But if I could somehow find what makes these, other than Florida, because I can't, I can't bring this stuff to Florida, but if I could find what makes these so important, whether it be a trophy, whether it be recognition, whether it be broadcasting, I would love to do that, to Ooh. see some of these legitimate matchups. And it with it close enough to where it could bring some hype. Because to me, I, I'm an avid semi-pro fan, but when I see, and, and I, don't, I don't even know what the team would be called, but when I see the Cincinnati Chiefs playing the South Dakota Wreckers, I don't get hyped for that. Because, because you don't know anything, I don't know about, anything about the Wreckers. Yeah. Yeah. If the Chiefs lose, did the record, you know, did you bring everybody, or is it hard for South Dakota to get to Florida? I don't know. But what I think would be fun Marion County Crusaders, Cincinnati Chiefs. They're both close enough. They hear the talking. Yeah. They, they, many of them share the same page, so it's going to be there. Or, or my man Billy Cole, his team, the Blaze, the Sabers, the uh, the Storm, 
playing some of these teams like the Hurricane, the Spartans, the Titans, some of these teams that are mouthy in Kentucky, playing some of these teams that are mouthy in Ohio. And and, and everybody would be hyped. Yeah. You know, a lot of people get on to me, why am I covering, why am I sharing PAFL rankings and PAFL results in the Kentucky Anna Page? Because I want Kentucky to know what's going on in Ohio. But I, I just think that would be fun. And we, and we, and we want doing. you guys to follow suits. See what they're doing. Make the MSFA like that. Exactly. Yeah. Like I said, somebody Bro. needs to come along yeah. and say, Indianapolis to Nashville is me. You get the Crusaders. You get the Assassins. You get the Bl- the Cutters. You get teams in Louisville. Let the Piranhas come back. You get the Spartans. You get a team from Bowling Green. Maybe even get the Red Dragons if, if they're willing to give up the GDFL. Get the Colts. Maybe a new team's bound to pop up. It Get sounds like we're uh, starting the uh, cross sports network. I'm uh, not running league. a league, <laughs> but I, I do have a question for you. I, I, I mean, do we still got enough viewers to stay interactive? Oh yeah, definitely. Okay, I got a question for the viewers, and I, I want to know. I, I'm not doing this because it's a headache, <clears throat> but if I told you I was bringing a league like the PAFL, say the PAFL didn't exist, but I was going to run a league as the PAFL, and I charged X amount of dollars, but I assured you that I was going to run this legitimately. And there was the factors. Whatever you want a league to offer you, I could offer. Let's just say that. I don't know what you want. Every team has something different. But let's pretend that I said those magical words and you're like, I want in cross sports league. But then everybody started doing the math. And they said, okay, X amount of dollars go here. We get all-star game. We get all-star jerseys. We get championship field. We get this. We get that. But he's still, we're still missing $20,000 in league fees. And I came to you and I said, that's my profit. I'd quit my job to make sure this league is ran right. Mm-hmm. And I was upfront and honest. And I said, I took twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. And like I said, I, this is all imaginary because I don't know what the league fees would have to be to make this happen. But your league fees, everything's covered. You get a nice field. You get a championship field. You get an all-star game. You get uh, publication. The website's ran right. You're on TV. You're on YouTube. Shoot, maybe even nice trophies, maybe even championship wing, rings, maybe an award I don't know. I'm just talking like it's legit. But, yes, I do pocket $30,000 or the commissioner pockets that money. Are you okay with that? Because you're going to have to pay a league fee everywhere you go, at least in, in my fake league. I have no other job. My job is to make sure this league is legitimate. Yeah. Are you mad at that? If you're If you were asking me, if a commissioner, I'm asking, I'm asking everyone, well, but, yeah. Yeah, but if you're asking me, like uh, people don't don't seem to be really commenting yet on it, so I, I'm going to chime in on it. As a commissioner of a league, you are taking time away from your family, right? You are taking time away from work. You're taking time away from sitting at the lake drinking a beer. Exactly. If you are not pocketing some money, ah, uh, like I get it. You don't want them. You to should pocket. be taking some money. You yeah. don't want them to pocket if your team if if if. If you're struggling to have all-star games and there's no jerseys and the yeah. championship game doesn't have a location and all of a sudden the, the commissioner's team is is undefeated and the best and they out there Man, looking like the Oregon Ducks, yep. I get it. You got questions. Hey, this money's not adding up. But if everything's on the up and up and the commissioner does not have a team in the league, he does not have a dog in that fight other than all 30 to 50 to 80 to 10, how many teams are in this league? And he's making a, a, an honest salary out of it, but he's dedicating 60 to 80 hours a week. I don't see how you can be mad at that. So uh, coming from a team owner myself, my biggest concern about team or uh, like about league fees was the league that we were in wasn't offering an all-star game, wasn't okay. offering all-star jerseys, w- wasn't offering anything. They weren't even paying for the championship field. But the league fees were $1,000, say, it's a thousand or fifteen hundred, and there was no breakdown of where that money was going. I feel as a owner, I want to see hey, ten thousand dollars goes to here, ten thousand dollars goes here, five thousand dollars goes in my pocket, and and I feel that everybody in the chat I mean is saying that yeah, a, yeah. Well, a commissioner see- should should definitely take a cut, which which totally is totally acceptable is because you know you are putting in. 50, 60, 70 hours a week. Right. I mean, like, now, I, I, on your mind. I seen Billy Coe said 20K, no, or 20G, no. Are you talking like you would, like that's not a good full time job or that's too much for him to be taking? 
because if it's too much for him to be taking, I question to say why, sir. But if it's he's doing it for a full time job, I mean, maybe he's maybe he's a uh, he works from home and he can still dedicate some time, or maybe he sells real estate and he can pocket twenty grand on some part time work. But this is his true passion. Um, you know, I, I just see, to uh, chime in on that, I mean, if it's a P, it's a, if it's a PAFL style league, they have what 30, 40 teams, and, uh, and you. Yeah. And so, oh, yeah. so let's just do some rough math here. Say, say league fees are a thousand, a thousand dollars, and ten percent of that goes to the commissioner. You know, that's that's a hundred dollars. So you have, you know, forty teams. That's four thousand the dollars. The dollars that you're going to pop. pop yeah, and pocket. so I mean, it's not a, yeah. it's not overly a lot. And and yeah. um, it looks like uh, Zen Bliss uh, said that. You got to make sure everything's tipped off. I, that's what I'm. That's my point I'm making. I mean, there's no shady business. No, everything's taken care of. You got a strong. You know, maybe the the championship game. You know, is is at a nice university. Um, maybe the all star jerseys are, are paid for in full. Maybe it maybe there maybe it's not all from team fees. Maybe he he works hard to get sponsors to cover it. You know, maybe you get like a Rydell sponsor and he gives helmets to the all star game. I don't yeah. know, or donates yeah. them and, and they got to be returned. Whatever it may be, I just think. Just to chime, just to chime in. This is all hypothetical. Yeah, yeah, speaking, I, I, so I, I, it would yeah. be, it, it could never happen because, in order, he would he would either have to be an extremely rich guy already doing it mm -hmm. and willing to take that hit, because there's going to be a lot of naysayers at the beginning. Yeah. So the first year there's only going to be ten teams, and that's not going to be enough to live off of. Yeah. That's not going to be enough to quit your job. And then when you prove, hey, you're on TV, hey, you're on this. And I see a lot of people saying if you can have letters. Yeah, we're being we're being all up front. Yeah. We're being we're being like whoever does this is being completely honest. Maybe there's a meeting, maybe he has a banquet it is and just he like shows the, you the breakdown. Like the NFL. Yes, yeah. he shows you profit sharing or not profit sharing, but he shows you where, where everything is. You know. Yeah, I, I, Billy, league owners or owners do lose money. But it, it's it's on a small scale. I yeah. mean, you're dealing with a, a set of players, a commissioner, and I'm just saying, like, Jermaine and Charles, the, I haven't heard Jermaine as much, get as much flack, but Charles down the GFL, he gets a lot of flack. I, I don't know what's warranted, what's not warranted, but the man, the, both these guys are running teams with 25 multiple teams, and yeah. not just teams, legitimate teams. I mean, like I stated earlier in the show, last year, the MSFA started with 24 teams. But most of these teams, I think 12 of them were brand new. Oof. 18 in total, counting the 12, were either new or first or second year teams. So that only left eight core teams. Yeah. And I think you only finished the season with eight or ten. <clears throat> I mean, I remember going to, uh, I think uh, uh, Michael Payne was there from the, the Buccaneers. There were some other guys there because there was teams called the the Cincinnati Red Devil, Blue Devils. There was the Cincinnati Hit or Queen City Hitmen. There was all these teams that just didn't make it. And and I, I think his problem was he went too big too fast. Yeah. So, I mean, and um, from an outsider's perspective, I like I had a, this really good conversation with Terry Moore about a month ago, like like about the same topic here. I really feel like a team owner should not be a commissioner of a league as well. I feel there's some type of conflict of conflict of interest in there. Uh, I mean, like you can say I'm going to separate the two, yada yada yada, but at the end of the day, you want your team to do well. So there's going to be some type of, hey, I want my team to play eight home games instead of everybody else's versus six. You know, there's right. there's, there's there's always no, going to be I, a and, something. And I see, then that's what they're talking. They're talking about that everybody runs a league. And I'm saying you can do it. Yeah, I'm not saying, but, saying you can't, but and, on the scale I, that I we want to be if at. If I'm not mistaken, I think uh, – I know Slash runs the Dukes. I know uh, Jermaine runs the Smart Raiders. Earth. I think Charles runs – I want to say the Lightning Bolts or maybe the Blast, one of those um, – and I'm not saying they're doing anything wrong, but when you start getting to the hypothetical question that we yeah. proposed, when when real money starts getting, when big money starts getting involved, you start getting really zoomed in on that microscope. Yep. You start they they start asking you a lot of questions, like you said, how's this team got so many home games? How many? Yep. How's this team not have to travel when when every other team when when every other team in your division has to travel five hours? Why does your team not? So, I just think it would be 
easier not to. I'm not saying anything against it. I mean, I think every league that I cover, their commissioner owns a team. Yeah, and I believe you're right. And uh, just to answer the question, Ryan. Yeah, I, uh, I don't. Yeah, like I, I, I do believe every. Of of yeah. the the four, considering the PFL one league, of those four, I do not believe any of them do not run a team. Yeah. The I, I don't think John Jackson and maybe somebody if they're watching from Indiana will recognize. Um, I I don't think John Jackson of the MLFA ran a team. At least not. Maybe I could I'm, be wrong. I'm not for sure on that one. Uh, just kind of looking through here. Uh, Baptiste says that Jermaine has a, a tougher schedule, and and sometimes you do that. You know, they always say the old adage: if your son is, your, if you're coaching your son, yeah, there's you're either one or two ways. You're either easier on him because he's your son, or you're tougher on him because you expect more and you don't want that perception. Yeah. I'm not saying anything negative about any of them. I think Jermaine does a great job. I have not heard anything negative about Jermaine. Yeah, and I want to make that like, 100% clear. We are not right. trying to bash anybody. I'm or just, any I'm just trying whatsoever. to see what kind of precedent you would have to set for a league commissioner or a league owner, or whatever you want to call it, to make twenty, thirty, fifty thousand dollars a year salary. And the teams be okay with it. The teams yeah. say, okay, he worth it. And uh, just to uh, kind of backtrack a little bit, say a The team Billy Cole owner, Football he, League. Yeah, Shut that. him down. Just to, uh, Pass say, your bedtime, sir. just to say a team owner does run the league as well, there needs to be some type of uh, like a board, you know, like a voting board. It, yeah. Like, you know, just, I think just so he would have to. I, I think he wouldn't actually, you know. So then you start working your way. Well, if you got so much of the board, you know, then what's the, what's this guy getting paid all the money to do? You know, well, so well, it, well, it, well it, like the board could, would be there strictly just to like vote and just right. it, it kind of be. Uh, and maybe it couldn't happen with? in semi pro. Maybe yeah. because the only reason it works in the NFL is because the commissioner is paid by fellow billionaires. Yeah. So Jerry Jones doesn't mind taking a pay cut for that. If if you have the the, the landscape where one man is making like and Billy Cole brought it up earlier where you have a commissioner making 20, 30, 40,000 a year and then you have money. team owners losing money yeah. you have team players paying team fees you have you know every board members not making a dime it, it's not I don't see it working long so they did. So they. So the GDFL does have a board, from what Ryan has said. Oh, uh, I mean, so, I, I would imagine. Yeah. So. I mean, but um, like, I don't even know I, what I, about what just, Billy Coe's saying. I, 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 I'm just saying, Shut it the down, board Billy. is there to kind of be a mediator. So, like, say if I'm, I, I don't, I, I don't even know who the uh, commissioner of the GDFL is, but it's say Charles Thompson, I believe, I believe he's the one who runs it. Well, but uh, is he? Oklahoma Thunder owner. No, or? I think he's. I think he's from the Southern Tennessee area. Okay, so let so let's just say he runs the the uh, Bolts, and you know. I don't know. I'm seeing a bunch of no's from somebody. I don't know. I I don't know. But I, I'm just speaking hypo hypothet that 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 if we hear the board you know you can't is do here. That in semi -pro. The the oh the, his team has a board, not the league. Oh okay. Well, I anyways, a league needs to have a board. So if a commissioner owns a team. And that team has twelve home games and or and then one game on the road. Like the board would be like, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, what's the term I'm looking for? A blower? It was a blower. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that would that would that would be the board. That's 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 our, that's your whole job is kind of overlook things like that. All right. Thanks, Baptiste, for letting us. He owns the Memphis Blast. I knew it was one of those yeah. Tennessee teams with some kind of electrical name in it. All right. It seems like uh, most of our viewers are getting. Getting wind down. We're getting stuck with our faithful, which we, we love every one of you. And then Billy Coe starts naming leagues after himself. That's usually when you call it a night. Um, we'll be back, I want to say, the 11th. Let is me look. Let me is? look. Let me look. It is going to be July 11th, 9 o'clock Eastern time. I'm going to do a 30 for 30. I don't even know what he's talking about, but I'm doing a 30 for 30 on Billy Coe and the rule named after him. The Billy Coe rule. You know what, Billy? Don't tell us yet. What do you think the Billy Cole rule is? Oh, Billy Cole rule. Mm. Judging by the conversations that we had, like, like I don't know him personally outside of Facebook and on the phone. I would say, ooh, game must start on time. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> just so something off the wall like that. Like six well, o'clock kickoff time, it must be at six o'clock or you forfeit the game. I think if it's Billy Cole, it's gotta be something absurd. <laughs> like no changing players uniform numbers mid game. Like that seems like something oh. Billy would do. Billy would do something petty <laughs> to mess with or or no No tape on the left ankle. <laughs> right. Or or no sending your players into the other team's huddle. So and I I can only imagine what I don't I don't see Bill just kind of talking to Billy. He, he seems to have great integrity for the sport. I don't see it being yeah. like the quote unquote tuck rule. I don't see it being anything on field. I see it being some like petty, shysty office shenanigans. Um Billy absurd cool. <laughs> All right, well well Baptiste or Billy, go ahead and tell us what it is, because that, that'll be our last thing for the night. What's the Billy Cole rule? The Billy Absurd Cole rule. Talking too much trash. <laughs> oh. I, I'm not surprised. So, but what league has that as the Billy Cole rule? I figure that's just unsportsmanlike. Is there like a, a set of words? Like you can say six words? Like in PG 13 movies, you're allowed one F word. Is the Billy Cole <laughs> rule, you're entitled so many profanities? <laughs> He was banned for an entire year? Billy. We got to get you playing the Sabres, man. I can see that old Billy. All right. You can't say nothing against the BCFL. Oh, so you're talking smack about the BCFL. Oh. All right. Well, we're out. Billy, don't get banned. I have nothing to talk about. Actually, get banned, and you can just come on the show forever. Oh, okay. Well, then I better watch what I say. But we're out.